6 o'clock. The agenda is set. So we're moving right into presentations. Uh, before SEI uh, begins their capital project update, um, this month is National School Board's uh, Recognition Month, and I just want to thank the school board for your constant support and dedication, not only to our students and our faculty and staff, but to the district as a whole. So as a, as a token of my appreciation in working with you, um, I provided you with a, a Team OA long sleeve t-shirt. Um, with the slogan that together we are better, stronger, and we are one, with the team away on the on the back. So hopefully you, you'll wear that at sporting events, you'll wear it around the community, around town. So just wanted to, to thank you for your service um, to our district. I personally, you know, being a former board member myself, this is not an easy job. Um, it's it can be very thankless at times, um, and it can be very time consuming. Um, so certainly just wanted to extend um, everybody's appreciation for what you do here through the district. So thank you. Thanks. 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 Thank, you. thank you. Happy late losses day. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right. Uh, so we're on to SEI after that. Well, thanks for having us here. And, and as John said, uh, uh, we appreciate board members too. Who, as I've shared before, I served myself for six years, so I understand the commitment and the uh, the time that it takes away from from our personal lives too. So thank you very much for your service. Okay. All right. Good evening. Uh, just as a reintroduction, Ted Mountain with SEI Design Group. Um, I'm Rich Lee. Sorry. We appreciate the time uh, tonight to give you an update on the project. We're excited to show you where we are, um, and we definitely appreciate the back and forth that we've had with the district, the administration, the entire team uh, on this design so far. We've been working through the summer and early fall here, and we've made excellent progress. And uh, we also just appreciate um, the working relationship that we've had based on the fact of being one of the craziest years you know we've, any of us have seen. So um, doing all that and opening school and, and being successful with the kids and also running this capital project is is a lot of work for everybody and, and we're just glad to be part of it. So, um, what's that? Just um, go ahead. I really want to just take an opportunity to thank the administrative team because their efforts and what they allowed, the access, the time, uh, the, the access to the staff members, what we're going to talk about today and looking at each one of these plan areas, you're going to see the work that went into it involved the people in each area. So if we were talking about the high school main office, we sat down and brought in the, the people working in the high school main office talking about where they're going to sit, how they're going to face, how they're going to greet people. Uh, the elementary school bringing in the cafeteria staff, that was done with every space. So the, it's truly a collaborative effort here by all the participants to really develop a plan that works best for everybody. So we're, we're really excited about what we've got here today to share. Um, there are some things that we need from the board at this point. As you're aware, we, we hit the SED debt, that, uh, sorry. SD submission, which went out for pricing, and we did receive good news today from uh, the construction management team, literally as we were arriving here, that we're under budget. Um, so there is some opportunity to look at the scope and define. We're still early in the project. There's built-in contingencies and things, and we still have to de-scope and go through and look at his estimate, but we are on the, on the a good, size, a good side of the budget going into this project, and we do have um, a very good feel of what we've got accounted for there. So we'll be working to watch and see how that unfolds and where we are with it. But we are at a point now where we're going to look today and talk a little bit about the exterior of the building, and that's really where we're looking for some feedback. We've come up with some architectural renderings that have been developed through some conversations in our groups, but now we'd really like to, to hear from you and see what do you guys think. And uh, you'll see some samples over here. The blue is a color we're going to talk about. Uh, the glass, there's a few different shades that we're looking to use in different areas for different reasons. So we'll talk a little bit about that, but we definitely feel free to ask questions as we move through it, and please share your thoughts and what you're seeing. So here's our agenda, and I believe you have copies of this as well, so uh, as we go through it. Um, we've got, uh, of course, the scope update for each building. So we want to run through that with you, show you plans, renderings, where we are. Uh, at the end, we'll talk about, uh, we want to key in on the site, of course. That's a big part of this project. 
uh, the redesigned site, and then the schedule and questions. So that's our basic agenda. We'll start with uh, the bus garage. Um, you see the plan here, and uh, I think this is the only slide we have. Just highlighting some of the infrastructure items is coming out of the BCS. Um, you can see the list there of uh, sort of nuts and bolts things that we're taking care of over there. Um, really utility type things, trench drains and finishes. Um, the generator is going to get uh, redone and uh, some restroom work and then of course the work around the site. So that work is ongoing. There is a lot of design aspect to it. So we're just plowing through with the um, technical part of that project. Elementary school, as a reminder, this is the existing plan, and you've seen these before. These were the key highlight areas, so I just want to mention that it's not that there's nothing happening in the areas of white. It's just more um, generic types of things. If there's building-wide systems or there may be hit and miss uh, HVAC, plumbing, and electric items that we're hitting as part of the BCS in those other areas, but Some in the... Walls. Huh? Some walls. Those walls. <laughs> Some wall work, of course. Um, but in the key highlight areas, that's what we're going to talk about tonight, more of the design of the kitchen cafeteria, main office nurse, uh, the purple, blue color is the gym, and then some of the classrooms on the north end. First slide in here in detail on the elementary school is looking at some renovations to the classrooms. And again, this is um, this is looking at a new secure vestibule on the north end of the building here. And you'll see later with the site plan that ties into the, the bus loop that we're proposing to have. Also, um, some slight renovations to these classrooms to get rid of the demountable partitions, the temporary partitions that are there, and our poor acoustics. Um, we're putting in acoustically enhanced walls up there and some finish work. Um, a major part of the project, and we've had several very successful meetings um, on this, is the kitchen cafeteria work. Uh, so if you recall, in the kitchen, um, we're basically renovating that in full, taking care of finishes, the freezer cooler, and any of the equipment that needs to be replaced. And there's a blow up, I think, on the next page that shows a little bit more detail where um, you can see uh, the equipment layout is, is sort of redone. We are going to maintain the existing uh, exhaust hood, but we're going to re be replacing several uh, pieces of equipment in uh, the cooking area. Uh, some of the stuff that's dashed you see here is being reused, so if it's a good piece of stainless steel countertop, a prep table, we're going to reuse that. Um, the dishwashing area is getting redone, and then uh, one of the things we're excited about and and a lot of the work that we've done with the elementary school staff is the serving line here, which is going to be all redone, brand new, um, with two serving lines that are enclosed as part of that um, kitchen area. So this wall gets moved out. There's a wall here right now. This wall moves out. This is uh, representing an overhead door, which is similar if you're familiar with the high school layout. Um, an overhead door that can be opened up and opens up this entire area of the wall. Um, we can put district um, logos on that, just like at the high school. And then the other major thing is the bathrooms and the cafeteria, removing the stage down on this end, flattening that out. So this is all this can all be used for multi-purpose space at the same level. It'll all be ADA accessible, and it'll enlarge the cafeteria space and improve the ADA accessibility to the toilet rooms. Um, so that space is going to get a lot of fit and finish items that are going to um, mimic the high school but at an age appropriate level. One of the neat things that came out of the conversations was that currently where the toilet rooms are situated, students have to leave the cafeteria, go outside, and they're out of sight. By reconstructing them, we flipped them around, brought the entrances into the inside, so there's still privacy, but the students can be uh, watched easier, more efficiently across the room. Can I ask a question? Is sure. there going to be a stage anywhere in the elementary not, building? Not, not, with not a formal stage. The, the area is still there, and you can still use the area. It's got a corner cut out of it, like it had two before, now it just has a one. So it's still, you know, if 
it's not finalized. I mean, if we feel like it, we could probably detail something in the picture frame it so it would kind of feel like a stage area. But it, our discussion was that it, it kind of interrupts the, Lynn, feel free to speak up, but it kind of interrupts the use of the space. And I felt it was better to have it all on level. We also had a couple of specialized students that were having an issue getting up and down the stairs. We really couldn't find a safe way, and we were assigning adults to help them with that, and that really took away their independence. Um, so by bringing that down and having it flat, we can bring the risers in for chorus to practice, but we can also still set up for a band rehearsal. Um, we also have the space in the music suite when that door is open between the two sides. Um, we've talked about changing the flooring to make it more appropriate so we can have lessons and instrumental um, so that the floor is easier to clean. So we'll have essentially two spaces available for those needs. Okay. Next space, uh, next page and slide is uh, related to the gym. Uh, you can see there, there isn't really a reconfiguration of the gym. We're just replacing uh, some things in kind, new bleachers, uh, the new divider wall. Uh, it's going to go in to divide the room in half and some acoustic upgrades. Uh, the next space is <coughs> back in the, uh, in the rear hallway, there was a desire to improve the restroom situation back there for visibility and supervision. So uh, we've done a number of iterations of this, and I think we, we hopefully have the winner right now, but if there's more changes, we can do it. Um, Basically, you can see on the blow-up slide here that what we're doing is we still have the girls and boys side with um, the fixtures, but then we're opening up and reconfiguring the front area by the hallway to improve visibility to the sink area. So essentially that sink area is coming outside into the hallway more or less for visibility. So um, you'll be able to see into these spaces uh, where the sinks are from the hallway and then there's two distinct entrances still a girl's side and a boy's side and then of course the rest is just reconfigured and upgraded um, for finishes and fixtures we've used this configuration in other districts and what we find is that once those students are brought forward like that and the, the you know the toilet and the fixtures are behind some of that nonsense is a little less because they feel like they're being more Surveil. They can be seen. It doesn't look as fun as it's set up now. <laughs> that was the point, Mr. That was the point. Oh, <laughs> man, I had a lot of fun there. <laughs> this next one is uh, may not be familiar to the board because it's really an added scope that we, we came to and grew into out of the process of the design phases. Um, it's a reconfiguration of a classroom to provide uh, counseling suite. So right now some of these counselors are in separate rooms almost taking up entire <coughs> classrooms and it was felt through the design process that it would make more sense to consolidate them into one space um, into spaces that, that made more sense size-wise. So what you can see here in the blow-up, is there, there's a blow -up, another blow-up, right? I think that's, oh there is. So on the blow-up page you can see uh, there's sort of a, a therapy area, a central area off the hallway um, a toilet room that's off the hall, and then we've got three council rooms off that main space. And uh, that seemed to be the best fit for consolidating all these programs into one area. So we came up with this design. We I think we've refined it once so far, and we're getting pretty close to um, what they need. But that's something that wasn't envisioned originally, but it came out of our process, and it seems to make a lot of sense for the project to do it this way. Where is this space within the building? No one. It's in a classroom. If you look at uh, two slides before, sorry. Oh no, that's fine. No problem. I kind of brushed by that. Right over here, there's a classroom. It's hallway B, Justin. Wait, what is that? Hallway B. Okay. <coughs> right at the end of where Mrs. Delapena's room, yeah. the receiving area is. I gotcha. So it takes that classroom, makes a council suite, but it opens up other spaces that are currently. Kind I of also don't have a designated space for um, our school psychologist. She is constantly being shuffled around or having to share a space. And with the confidentiality, we just didn't feel that that was conducive to meeting her needs right now. It's like a one stop shop. Oh, you come in and you're good to go instead of all over the place. And we're keeping them centrally to you know, you know the primary grades. You know, there's a little bit more to address there at times, but then it'll also give them a really nice collaborative space as well. 
Uh, the next space is we did talk about uh, preliminarily, and we had some initial concepts uh, a long time ago. We've since um, worked on the main office itself and the nurses area quite a bit. Uh, there's been several iterations of this, and we think we're getting to a very good design now, again, working with everybody that would be in that suite, uh, including uh, all the staff of the main office, uh, the reception area, and the nurses uh, area uh, has all been back and forth through several design meetings. So what I'll do is I'll walk through it in general, starting from the main entrance. So what you see here, and you'll see some renderings in a minute, is a little bit of a facelift on the front entrance here. It's still in the same location, but it gets a facelift, a little bit different um, glass configuration and, and signage that you'll see in the rendering that we've done of the front of the school. So you'll see that in a minute. Um, there's a main vestibule that you see there, V1. That would be your primary exit from the building and also an entrance that can be used for kids um, at, at, uh, at various times of the day for, for parent drop-off and so forth. Uh, that vestibule can also be used by staff who have credential to just go right through there into the building as long as they have the right um, ID. Uh, and then during the day, everything's locked down. So we want everybody to come through a secure vestibule and have an interaction with somebody at the front area. So that's the secure vestibule to the right that you see there. So the idea is during the day, the four doors, the two double doors would be shut down and locked. This door could be opened or could be configured to be locked. But once you get into that vestibule, you're locked into that little vestibule there until you go through a transaction process whereby you have a um, scan of an ID and or an ID is issued to you. Um, and then once that happens through the window to the right, you can enter into the waiting room. And the way we've set up that waiting room is there's still an ability for the district to use that in multiple configurations and security measures, but it can be fully locked. So you can let somebody in, a visitor, um, into this space and still have these two doors locked um, until there may be some final interaction. And then this door is released if you're visiting somebody in the office, or this door is released if you're going to see somebody in the school. So there's multiple levels of um, security going on here through the process and as you walk through it. Um, and we have a series of doors and windows um, to provide visibility from the main office um, to see who's coming in. Uh, there's a couple of uh, reception area uh, staff desks right here. The main door in is right in between. And then there's an additional door here to the school that can also be locked or open depending on the needs um, for the staff in the main office. So this is another small waiting area that can be used. Um, and then there's a, there's a storage um, prep copy area to the top. And then you see the space is flowing off to the right. Um, we've got a mail room, which is going to be a little bit different from how they do it now. You'll be able to come in off the hallway, you see the door on the top, and then these are the mailboxes actually on the bottom of that mail room. So the, those boxes are backfed um, from the main office. So there's really no interaction here between people getting their mail and the actual uh, main office itself. So they'll be fed through, somebody will come in, they'll get their mail and go back out. Then we've got the principal's office, which has glass to the reception area, a new large conference room that can be used for multiple um, meetings, and then storage, files, and access from the back with a small kitchenette. And then there's a, a, a toilet room that's ADA accessible from the main office, and then another toilet room uh, for the faculty room that's down at the end. So that's kind of a quick overview of the main office suite. Um, and then the nurse um, is on the one, other side. One question. Yep. Well, who, where's the person located who monitors that secure vestibule? Right down here. This would be their workstation, and they would have a, 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 a direct um, vision through right here to the secure <coughs> vestibule. There's so, also probably going to be like an A phone as well on the wall so that there can be a camera. So the fact that that chair is pointing away from that window to the secure vestibule, you doesn't matter? 
That's just a rendering. That's it just works, a full yeah. workspace for Kim. Yeah. That whole area that Alice designated for Kim and the other Alice designated for Rosie. So they'll have a variety of ways to configure their desks. <coughs> yeah, their workstation could set up anywhere along there. Generally, generally, you don't put your computer in front of that window because right. the window will have at least a little dish where you can pass a paper through. So a lot of things that we're seeing at the entrance of the school, one of the things we've talked about is we're going to be adding a, like a, 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 a like a library drop box. So after hours, so after hours, after hours somebody can There's come a box open right up the hatch and put it in. So once you come into this vestibule, I've seen you outside, I've, I've buzzed you into the vestibule, now you come into the vestibule, I have a window in front of me, kind of like a teller. It's, I mean, it's not, it's, it's a secure window, but it's not a, a crazy window. But it has a little pass-through, so that if somebody's just dropping off, you know, a note for the for the teacher or a homework assignment, that can just be slid underneath there. Um, we generally set it up so there's a little bit of a cut for um, EpiPen. Seems to be one of the biggest things that get dropped off when you talk with nursing staff. That's about the largest box that you get. So we're trying to find a, a happy medium convenient to slide things through. So those are the conversations we've had and talked about. So that'll be there. But you generally wouldn't put your computer right there, so that's why the chairs are small. Okay. On the other side, the nurse, uh, I think we've got a really good layout now. We've had a, a couple of these back and forth. Um, book storage, you see on the left, getting into the nurse's suite, that's entrance off the, the lobby with a small glass side light. Uh, then there's the nurse's desk right here, a sink storage area countertop a small waiting area um, and then we've got the isolation room which is accessible from the hallway this way uh, that we worked into the design as part of the process of going back and forth with what was needed in that area then we've got a dedicated exam room right here which has a cot refrigerator and a sink then we've got three cot areas with curtains uh, the wall you see on top of that area is a half wall so that might be four or five feet high, but it'll so it'll be kind of open above, but um, provide some privacy. And then we've got an ADA accessible toilet um, with a shower, a washer dryer room or a closet, and then a storage closet. So that's that's been a very nice um, interactive design back and forth to get to this point. And we think we're pretty close on that one in terms of everything that they need there. Before we jump to the exterior of the buildings, anybody got any questions about what we've seen so far? Well, that's a lot in the office <laughs> nurse. So the next slide is uh, giving you our concept rendering right now of where we are with the redesign of the main office um, entrance. So this is a shot in time. We're not done. It's kind of where we are right now. So as we develop the plan, we go back and develop the elevation rendering see where we are what works what doesn't work and so right now where we are as you see um, some glass areas there's some some wall areas down low the four doors I talked about on the left uh, the, the entrance for visitors is that fifth door uh, the pastor rich was talking about would be in this wall right between the bushes here and then we've got some signage and uh, an outdoor digital screen on the right and then we've sort of got, you can see the silver is kind of like a curved eyebrow um, canopy area that provides some cover for, for the rain outside to cover that entire space. So what we would do is walk up like you do now. Um, we're going to reconfigure the sidewalk as part of that entire site design we'll talk to you about in a second. And you approach the four doors, but you'd have the ability to come over and use that um, basically visitor door and or the drop box in the wall off to the right. There's a couple other renderings too, but um, they show kind of a different perspective. Same, same design, uh, gives you a little idea more of the canopy, uh, the glass versus the brick wall. Um, the vis visibility out on the right is gonna be uh, from the office area itself, so they can observe parent drop off in the front. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And the last rendering, I think, is more from straight on, kind of a bird's eye, that gives you an idea of some of the graphics we're thinking about right now. You know, we can have something that says main entrance up on the canopy. We can have another um, sign down low to indicate that this is the main entrance. And again, it's in development, but we have the ability now with these 3D programs to give you a pretty good idea of what it could look like. 
and uh, we just continue to develop it and, and look for good feedback from everybody on what they think. I think that's the element there. Yeah. So it's probably a good time to see if there's any questions before we move on to the high school. That's sort of the elementary school summary. Any thoughts on the entry? I like it. I, I, I like it a lot. I like how it's, it's not going to be this vo a void, like a large void there. And you know, I like how it shifted the sidewalk, shifted to the to, you know to the left of the building, and then just some some shrubbery or something there. To, it just looks clean to me. Not that it doesn't now. I just I think it just looks nice. Hopefully it'll break down the wind tunnel a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I like the signage too. That it's actually a main entrance. We don't have really any indicators of signs in the whole district, which is you know when we drive around, you don't know where, where the heck you're going half the time. We've talked about that. Uh, <clears throat> one of the next things we'll be bringing to you is a sign study of the entire campus because when we talk about the site plan, we've talked about the different areas and how we've shifted parking. Uh, to accommodate that, we're going to have to address that with directing people to where they need to go. So sure, we'll talk a little bit about that, but we'll be back with a, a whole package. And you'll see with the site plan, which is probably the last thing they're going to talk about, um, where the bus loop is going to be, where the parent drop-off is. I think we had originally had talked about, honestly, moving the main office to that north side. And after many, many discussions and many, many drawings, um, we didn't want to do that. So this, the front of the elementary will remain the front of the elementary, um, you know, throughout the day. Um, and so that's, that's where the focus is now is for the security. So that you know, new canopy entrance off to the north side where the bus loop is really will only be utilized for, you know, arrival and dismissal of the kids going on the buses. Um, but this will still remain the main entrance of, of the elementary. Because um, I know that we had discussed, you know, initially that there was, there was a, you know, um, you know a, a projection that we might end up moving um, the main office. But, you know, after all of these drawings, it, it was better to you know, where it was and that's why there's so much um, construction as far as like the nurse's office goes and the main office itself so. you guys said there's going to be some work done in the back vestibule or the, that back entrance is it going to near this to an probably extent? Be similar but on a smaller Small, scale sure. yeah because yeah. in there it's it's a it's an entrance now but it doesn't have a vestibule right so we're going to want to create a vestibule um, We'll be, we've already started talking about radiant heat out there a little bit too to help with salt and, and things like that. <coughs> so it'll be smaller, just a few doors wide, because it's only going to be the arrival and departure. Back here, that's going to be back here. Yeah, we're still working on that, but we wanted to get this front one done first and see what everybody thought and then move on to the back one so we can mimic it. So then there's one last rendering on the elementary school that just shows you kind of this would be your view once you get closer. And, we did a lot of signage discussions the last few weeks and we, we decided, you know, we, we had something up on top, we like that, but then as you get closer, maybe you lose that sign, so that's something you see more from the parking lot. Then as you walk up, you might lose that one above the canopy, so we, we added a couple more down low with some district logos and things like that just to give you another sense of entrance and, and coming into the school. And This gives you a shot of what you would see as you actually came up as a visitor with some of the plantings on the right side, which that's all still in development, but that's where we are right now with the elementary. Just got a couple of questions. I just want to make sure I got the square in my head. Sure. Um, the front entrance will have uh, handicap accessible doors. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And what is the, the state of the, the roof situation at the elementary school? The roof's in good shape. No leaks? No. Okay, that's good. Yeah, we're, a lot of the roofing was done on your last project and it's in very good condition. Yeah, your, your building envelopes have been very well taken care of and you're, you're at a good point. Tim, to speak to that, I think you're thinking about when we were starting to replace the HVAC units that were on the roof that had some, in the elementary school particularly, the were bad and we're getting, uh, it was the surrounding, like the vents and the units were leaking, not the roof particularly. Um, okay. And we did the most troublesome ones to 
two years ago now <coughs> in the summer when we could with the remaining funds from the 14 project. Okay. So, so there's no more buckets in the hallway. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's good. Promised. Yeah, that's certain little obstacle course there. Yes. Okay, that's good. All right, we're going to tr transition to the high school. Can Next I just second. ask one question? Yeah. I like this curved roof thing. Is it a problem now? Does the west sun really hit in that? Will this, it looks to me like it will help solve that. Is it? Honestly, Kim and I are so far removed from the entrance, we don't have a visual that I don't really know. Okay. Because the sun isn't <clears throat> something we see because we're so tucked back which is one of the things that we talked about a lot with these guys. Kim and I constantly were saying, I need to be positioned here. I need to be able to see. I mean, initially there were not that many windows in the principal's office. And I said, like, I, I need to be able to see all these eyes. And I need to have eyes on Kim if she's having issues with a parent. You know, so we did a lot of that. Um, they realized that we like more glass than not <laughs> towards the end. Um, but I think with the tinted windows and stuff, I don't think that'll be an issue for well, us. Well, it so looks we'll like actually. it would be nice, but then I thought maybe I would, I don't really know, but it looks like it would be. I think that will help in the summer cut off the sun a little bit. The sun's going to be higher in the summer. And, um, we should probably cut some of this heat gain to the main office. Thank you. Uh, again, just starting out with the, the plan you've seen in the past, identifying the scope. All of the perimeter windows in this building are going to be replaced. Uh, we'll talk about the entries, the auditorium, and the scope in the different areas. Uh, one of the first program areas is, is back by the fitness area. There's some work on the exterior wall. We're getting an infiltration of, of moisture. The wall's picking up and the plaster's kind of deteriorating. So we're going to fix that wall. But along with that, we talked about the use of the, of the fitness room. And by making some modifications to the vestibule, we can create a, uh, unit, a handicap accessible toilet room out there that can be locked off so that the fitness room and that vestibule and toilet room can be segregated from the building on off hours, things like that, and it can be controlled with doors and card access. So that's what this one is indicating. It's, it's my seat. Uh, the next area is the auditorium. In the auditorium, uh, we want to replace the stage. Uh, we're going to be working on the, uh, the rigging, the lighting, uh, acoustics, and plaster repair in there. Again, you had a lot of water problems. Those things have been dealt with. Now it's about getting back in there and fixing that up. One of the other elements would be adding an ADA accessible lift uh, in, off to the side of one, of the, uh, whoops, one side of the stage, so we'll pick up ADA accessibility to the stage. This is the guidance suite. So the guidance suite is adjacent to the current boardroom. We were trying to stay away from touching that current boardroom, but in meeting the needs of the size for the counselors, there is some modification. The room will, the room will stretch a little bit because that corridor will no longer be next to it. It's generally in the same location, but it's gonna get a little bit longer, a little slight bit narrower. Uh, but then what we were able to do So currently that room ends on this wall here and it and it comes up to this corridor here. So the room will get larger, um, but we're, that allows us to bring in a counseling suite with a reception area and then the required spaces. And again, we worked with Matt and his team up at this building to make sure that we've provided enough uh, office space for the individuals. Uh, there's also a testing lab in the back. And then that brings us right up to the conference room area here in the corner behind you. That uh, counseling area will have a nice presence on close to the main entrance that we're going to renovate in the lobby. And right there you'll be able to see the two double doors on the corner there. It's really given them a, a presence to the hallway for what's back in there in terms of resources. Once we've been able to take the, you know, currently people are arriving and entering the building here. The new configuration of the main office is going to bring all that out. That allows us to retake this space. One of the things is that this is a large area and it's kind of around the corner and out of sight. So by repurposing and bringing people into here, we've kind of eliminated some of that uh, attractiveness to it too. And 
and it gives you an outside door to the boardroom which you don't have now, which might work for a certain meeting for flexibility. Did you just say you've eliminated attractiveness of the room? To, so you've got a long corridor here where people can kind of cluster and get out of sight. So that that's no longer that's uh -huh. that's what's been eliminated. The attraction for the kind of nuisance space that's created. It's a large open area and it's really not being utilized. We're going to try to encourage people as you start seeing some of the other drawings. We're, we want to really encourage that gathering to happen out in front of the auditorium on the corridor along this way, where we have more supervision and more more ability to, to uh, watch people. Right now, other than the library and people coming down this hallway. There's not a lot of supervision. Now that the counseling suite's down there, you put adults in that area, they're moving in and out, other students, you've kind of gotten away from having that opportunity for you know, space where people aren't as supervised or feel like they're not as supervised. Um, this is looking at the district office. There will be some uh, minor work done on the vestibule. The, this was recently worked on. Uh, we're not planning on touching uh, anything significant in that space. There will be, most of the work is going to be done only with furniture and desks. There will be a, a, a build out for a vestibule here where people can be greeted. So again, you come into a vestibule, there'll be signage on the outside identifying this space as district office. Once you come into here, there will be a door and a, a visual where people can buzz them in. So you see them outside in the hallway behind a, a door, then you welcome them in. So you've seen them here, you're going to see them here. Now they're inside the workspace where you've got a counter and a transaction area where you can greet people and then they can come in and, and uh, meet or whatever they're there for at the district office. So there's not a lot of work here, but there are some things. We'd be taking out a window that's currently in that district office to put in a door and re control the, the configuration of entrance and exit. Um, So I'll just start with the overall of this general front area and the entrance. The entrance is in, in generally the same location. Um, we are reconfiguring the outside a little bit. We're working, um, we, we've talked about this a number of times, especially Jordan and, and our team. It's kind of a wind tunnel that comes along. The, the wind hits the front of this building and comes racing right along here. Right now the leaves kind of cluster up in there. What we've talked about is building out front here a little bit to underneath the canopy with raised planting beds with bench seating that allow an opportunity for students to gather and wait there on nicer weather, but it'll also help with some of that breaking that wind. We want to try to find and create barriers that'll stop that wind from coming in and hopefully kick it out and around before it rushes right into that corner. So we're still working on some of these things. Uh, we looked at the potential of maybe pulling this wall out a little bit here but that has some other uh, negatives to it. So we're, we're still trying to look at it, but we really feel that this will help some and keep some of that corner a little bit clearer. Um, we'll, I'll go to a blow up plan, but we are talking about the reconfiguration of some of the spaces back here. And one of them is this toilet room. Um, right now, we currently have the toilet room sitting in this area here. The intent is to bring it forward, maximize the space. That's actually space that we're not using now. It's space above your, your boilers. And when you, retro, when you replace your boilers in a, a previous project, the older boilers took up a lot more space. Now all of a sudden you've kind of got this volume that although there's pipes in there now and there would be a cost to change those pipes, we're looking at what is that cost so we can make that decision. But uh, we have looked at some other options of reconfiguring the toilets down here to stay out of there. So this, there's still some more work that will be done here and we'll, we'll come back to you when we finally get all the information. But the, the intent was to bring in a new toilet room closer to your event center, whether it's your gymnasium, your auditorium, and that would really be a great place to bring it. It's right at the entrance, right off the main lobby. That would be the, the optimal place. It's kind of a replacement and an upgrade for the, the, the bathrooms that are right here right now. Right kind of in the middle over here between the doors. So this is just a look at that toilet room and a little bit larger plan. Again, adding more fixtures than what we're, what we're losing. So starting at the entry, you would arrive at the front of the building. You're allowed into the vestibule. Then you're, there's a transaction window here, similar to what we talked about at the elementary school. You're allowed 
uh, the doors release so you're allowed into the main office uh, vestibule. Now from here, again, you, you've got opportunities. There's a waiting space here. You can be allowed to leave the building. Somebody can come and get you from here, or you can enter into the office space if that's what you're there for. But it's about slowing the progression and just controlling people at different points along the way. Uh, if we work with the, the uh, uh, assistants that are out there and the stations that we're going to have, you have uh, an existing vault that's good, but we do need to replace the door on that, right? The door is bad? Yes. Yes. Um, so we've got storage, a toilet room for this area, uh, work room, again, a new mail room, similar configuration. Your, your teachers and staff will enter from the hallway, come into the mail room. The mail room is in, in this configuration, it's this way, and then staff, you're, you'll load everything from the back. But what that does is really stops a lot of the traffic that we have in the office space that's disruptive. It brings that out to that outside area. Uh, we have a record storage room here, conference room, and the uh, principal's office, and assistant principal's office. There's a little small kitchenette back in here too. So we've redeveloped within that footprint that we had up in the front area. Sarah. Other than using what's already there, but you have a separate entrance space in the district office. Yep. And the school, but I mean, is there, to me, that's like you're just making two different doorways in the same spot, basically. But is there a way to kind of maybe try to bring that together? To well, there's two there. There's two now. They're right there. So what we're doing is we're leaving them that way so that the district office is the district office. What we find is that there's a lot of people that come to the district office during the day that don't need to be in school. So when we bring them all into one entrance, then we get confusion, we get transfer of people, and then what also happens is if they're here to see the district office and they're at the high school, I've got to send you now back across and either let people into the building and walk. So by doing this, because we already had them, we've got that nature where district office visitors are just going to the district office. You're going to have elementary parents come to this building to do registration. They can get into the district office, and they're not mixing with the high school. So, uh, you know, if the guy that sells your paper, he's going to come here. He can come to the district office. So that was the intent behind that, is to, to develop that separation. Um, these images here, I'm going to slide over this way. These images here were just a couple of uh, uh, renderings of what are possibilities of that vestibule. Uh, like we said, we really want to create an exciting space there, a breakout space. There'd be opportunity for sitting, there'd be opportunity for charging, there'd be opportunity for a monitor that a teacher could bring a small group down there. It's far enough away from your other instructional spaces so you could really take advantage of those areas in off time or reward time to bring students out there. So there's a lot of things that we can do there. During your major events, uh, evenings, when you have something going on in the gym or the auditorium, that gives you some place where, where students can be out and about. Along with this, you'll, you'll see in our plans as, we, as you get into more detail that we've put in some more cross corridor doors and what that's to do is to limit access to the rest of the building. You already have some of that in play, so we're just going to expand on that. During your events, you'll have the opportunity to let those doors close and the public coming into your building are only going to be allowed in these public areas. They're not going to be able to wander down into the middle school hallway or wander off into the back hallways. We really want to keep everybody gathered here, and by developing a space like this, it not only has an arrival, but it also has some purpose behind it, too. What you see on the rendering on the left is just an idea for a, really a district-centric um, wall design um, for Oakfield, Alabama, that has you know, we're showing a concept right now that's a new exciting wall with a number of these hexagons. And the hexagons right now are broken up into colors, different levels, maybe 3D display, so you could put in some 3D artwork or trophies or things like that. But then also a couple of the gray ones in the middle could be interactive screens or screens. Um, what we're finding, redoing lobbies right now with some other districts is that sometimes they're getting away from having like a bunch of plaques or static things on the wall and they're rotating images on a digital screen. So that was kind of the idea there. It's just a mix of different ways to show district pride and um, the work that's happening within the building. And then on the right, you can see we've opened up the ceiling. These are actually our existing um, roof structure right here. So the concept idea here is some hanging clouds down. We open that up, you get a little height, we color it, 
um, with district um, colors and then maybe add some skylights in for some natural light. So as Rich said, kind of invigorating that space, adding some more um, district colors and just um, creating some more height and light. Do you have a plan for blending that in with the green terrazzo for the rest of the building? We do. Um, we're really working on that right now. We're going to be able to affect the main office, lobby, entrance area, district office. As it goes back to the rest of the building, we're not going to be able to change everything, but we're going to try to upgrade that first and then see where we are with the budget in terms of what we can do with wall tile and how far we can go. We're not going to be able to do the whole building, but we'll start there and, and be able to work back um, in future projects probably. We will bring some samples of some different renderings that we can look at and, and make some decisions. So one of the key things that we're talking about is the replacement of the window system on this building. And the window system on this building is a, a pretty significant element because it controls everything from the water table, the brick base, all the way up to the bottom of the, the metal coping. When that window system comes out, it's gonna, we're going to replace the metal panel. Um, we're going to be able to insulate the panels above. Somebody had gone in and tried to jam some insulation in there, but uh, really it was, it's not a very thermal system and efficient system. So we will replace, so this image here is the existing. So the metal coping would stay, that's the, the, the uh, clear anodized or the metal looking material on the top. The blue all the way down to the stone would be removed and then it would be replaced back. At this point you have an opportunity to do a lot of different things. We've looked at a number of different uh, schemes a lot of it has to do with the windows. Uh, that's why you see some of the glass there. We've talked about going with a uh, darker tint for the classroom windows along the front. Uh, we've talked about maybe incorporating the, the blue uh, aluminum frames, and that would be similar to that sample that's over there on the, on the wall. And then incorporating in some different colors, breaking up some of the window sections. The size of the windows are pretty well set because, because of SED, we're required to hit minimum widths on egress and you don't want to have the windows change sizes to do that, so we kind of find a rhythm that works and come along here. Uh, the, the structure of the building breaks this up too, so that's going to lock in our windows to a certain pattern. So there's not a, a tremendous amount of flexibility, but there is an opportunity here. The real opportunity is in the color. Uh, when we select whether it's blue or, or, or different colors for the aluminum, and then also the glazing system, we want to really look at how that all is going to come together because it's going to be a dramatic change across the whole face of this building. As you get into some of the punched openings, it's a little bit, a little bit different. It won't have as, as much of that, but along that whole main face, it's really going to have that, an element. And that would be continued and carried around, same features all the way around the entire building. In that picture there, which parts of those windows open? Uh, your window opens here, so this one one window would open here, one window might open here. Okay. You require one per classroom, so. So it's going to give a little bit more in terms of operable windows per room, because this is actually half a room right here with the structure. So you're going to have you know, two opening sliding windows here and then two more down here, giving each room four. One could be the rescue window for egress, but the other three could be opened any time for natural ventilation. Right now, typically, you have one. Um, per half, so you have two total that you can open. So it will kind of double the amount of operable window that uh, is there right now. You said the top was uh, ionized? What did you say that was? Uh, the silver? Like clear, clear anodized is what the metal, the polished metal. That's the roof edge. That's the roof edge. Okay. Below that is going to be uh, a metal panel system. So it would be metal and colored again. And and yep. What's longevity on something like that? Uh, these panels here, yeah, it's fantastic. These the last, we put them on high rises, all large over. buildings. There's a lot of them all over. So they take this metal, it's finished, and then they put a, a phenolic panel behind it. So there's a backer board behind it, so it's not just the flimsy metal. And then depending whether we go with uh, set into the window system or route and returns, there's a couple different systems that once we get closer, we'll come up uh, with the design. But they're used at a lot of different locations. We use it in the Rochester City Schools, uh, Buffalo, it's on a lot of a lot of different buildings. So I'll hold that so color for years ago. Oh yeah, it's, the colors, years ago, reds were horrible, you know, the blues would fade a little bit. They've really come a long way with paint and with the, the process. 
so we're not. It turns green this. after a year. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it you it turns green like it is all good. All going. All going. Yeah. Um, uh, the only material right now that I warn people about if you try to use it that, that changes and is really a challenge is copper. Uh, people want to use real copper and it's wonderful, it's great, but there are a couple different grades of copper and then copper always turns black before patina. So, but most of these colors, first of all, the manufacturers now put a pretty good warranty on them uh, against the fading and the, and the chipping of the colors. So we'll look at that when we go to spec and, and detail the products. And we can show you references from different projects around that have held up very well. So we will be, we'll continue to develop this facade. Um, we're going to try to get some mock-ups more with uh, windows. We're looking at uh, some actual examples where these windows are installed uh, so that we can see not only on the outside, inside, it's great to have a, a piece like this, but it would be really nice. Uh, we talked to John and team about actually going to a building that has that tin of a glass so you can actually see and talk to some people then about how it, it's felt. You're still going to have shades on your windows. So during an event or sun and the, and the days when it is, you're still going to be able to pull down your roller shades. But these are very efficient glass and, and uh, yeah, be careful, I don't want it to fall on you. <laughs> I will jump to the outside of this building. Okay. So this is, uh, again, like we said on the elementary school, it's kind of a snapshot in time of where we are studying the plan, the elevation at the same time. What can we do with 3D renderings? So we wanted to give you a kind of an idea of where we are right now um, with a couple of renderings of the main entrance. So what we've developed is basically uh, to the right is the district office entrance that's existing right now. Then we have a large glass area into the lobby in the middle. And then we developed a canopy that actually rolls out on a curve and creates more space. Uh, we thought that was a good idea to create more waiting space underneath something that could protect from snow and rain. Um, for kids waiting with a, with a, you can see like a bench area out here. Again, the idea of breaking this up for the wind. And then we actually popped the vestibule up. You can see a little bit of that on top with some natural light. So we're letting a lot of light into the main entrance and district colors with the yellow and blue. Uh, the second rendering is kind of at dusk. So again, that's showing the idea of some canopy lights underneath, uh, some district uh, signage on here, main entrance again. Again, maybe new signage up on the auditorium wall there. So you can, you know, you'll see that first from the road, kind of far away. Then as you get closer into the um, parking lot, you would see these signs. And then as you get right up close to it, the smaller signs as you progress in. And we're playing around right now with this in terms of the colors and, you know, do we want to do the yellow detail on the frames? You know, just different ideas we're kind of talking about right now. This gives you the view as you would approach from the new parking lot. Um, Home of the Hornets on the, that's basically the auditorium wall. Um, this, this idea of a new curve which would sort of tie into the elementary school, but then we've got the extra element here with uh, the curved roof going this way with some natural light coming in through those high windows. So we've gone through a number of different iterations of that, and we're pretty happy with this one right now, but um, we welcome comments, of course, as we go through the process. And this rendering gives you another view of some of the planting areas. Um, the sidewalk would split to the two, the district office and the main entrance as you approach. And this one gives you another idea of as you approach what it would look like. So we had some things for a while that were taller, bigger, some that were smaller, and you know, there's so many things you can do with this, but uh, we sort of like the, the medium ground of this one, and providing really the money going into it, a lot of it is in this extra canopy right here that gives you that space underneath to wait for a ride to pick you up um, outside. Any first thoughts? I think I'm sure. one of the things we wanted to do is make sure that when when it's constructed, anybody arriving here is going to know where to enter this building. You know, we really wanted to make sure it has an, it has an arrival. Because uh, right now, when you come, you're, you're kind of off to the side over here, and you know, it's a little bit, you know, you almost, when you approach this building, you think this is the entrance. 
So this will really kind of focus that, but that's the, the core entrance of the I like the sign, the on the hornets up there on the it's on the great coming down the road. It's going to look great. It's going to be really good. Reminds me a little bit of Pembroke a little bit, how uh, they've got their, their signage up there over there. How much do we want to push the hornets, so, though? Know, we've got sports teams with different names, and you know, I think that's sometimes. All the way, baby. <laughs> All the way. The hornets still old field. That's right. <laughs> Some of the next things we'll progress through this is looking at different um, planting areas, the benches, breaking up the, the wind, also the signage. You know, you see right here a signage idea, but we can develop this more in terms of what the colors are, the finishes, which ones are lit. We can backlit some, backlight some of them. Um, you know, the home of the hornets, if we kept going with that idea, we could, you know, basically maybe make the silver letters static with a light off the roof, but then backlight the actual logo. So there's a lot of different things we can do there as we keep going with the design. But I mean, so far, I think we're excited about it. I think it's going to be a big change. And it's, it's yeah, there's going to be no confusion about where the entrance is when we're done. Here's the existing site plan, just so that we have it. Uh, if we want to go back to it, we'll get it. I'll uh, take this to the photo site plan. <coughs> so um, I'm going to start on this side of the building, just and then I'll kind of work my way across. Uh, there's still the entrance drive here. We are increasing a significant amount of the parking in the back. Um, I guess just to just to kind of step back for a second, our main goal is to not have less parking than we than we have out here currently. In the current proposed design, we have um, about 21 spaces additional to the site. What we've done is we've just taken the parking on the site and just reallocated to different locations based on what uh, the conversations with all the the stakeholders said we needed them. Um, by doing that, by moving those parking spaces, what we were able to do is open up this front area that's now a, a sea of parking and create some green space back in the front of your building. Um, and then I'll talk about each one of these areas and the, and the amount of parking that's in them and kind of how we came up with the numbers of why we're at it. Uh, so again, in the back area here behind the high school, we've increased the parking. Uh, we've talked about this being mostly staff parking. That's going to be adjacent to these areas, but then in the in the evening events, it's going to open up that opportunity that you have more <laughs> additional parkings, more directly adjacent to the athletic fields. So we're kind of taking that space that was out here and bringing it back into this area, hopefully alleviating some of the other challenges we have about people trying to drive there. We're not going to be able to put a whole parking field in the back, but we've moved those spaces off to that area. Will and that parking in that back lot be able to get to? gymnasium for a basketball game? Absolutely. Yep. So we'll be able to enter from two different directions. For yeah, you're right. going to be able to enter from this side. Anything like that. Yeah, you'll be able to enter from this side and this side. It's very close to the track also, the football field, so that'll be good. You know, your, your pool entrance is back there. You could enter for those events. And like I talked earlier about the control with the doors, in that back area, you already have a lot of those doors in place. And during like an aquatic event, you could close off the rest of the building, so you keep your parking back there and bring people in those doors, and not allow that flow all the way through the whole building. We may have to look at the doors and the controls and keep the main corridor open, but each hallway off of that then would be blocked also. So you're just eliminating, eliminating the opportunity for that roaming around your building. Um, so that was this back area here. As you drive along the front. That pretty much stays the same. Your parent drop-off is still going to come along this area. We're going to drop off in the front. We'll be stacking. You'll also have the opportunity to pass by people as you come out this way. You can pull into this parking lot if you want to stop and park. Um, that parking lot, we've looked at from a standpoint of how many, how many spots are in there. We looked at the number of staff that would possibly want to park out here using the middle school. We talked about the amount of... Uh, uh, 
administrators that are going to use that parking lot from the district office or from the high school office. And we've talked about uh, a, a group of uh, visitor parking, but then also enough parking spaces to accommodate uh, student parking. So you're going to have some areas, whether we stripe them a different color or do something of that nature, we dedicate one area for visitors, but we would have those, those groups of parking in those areas. And I think we're at 98 spots up in that front area. And that exceeds, Matt, correct me if I'm wrong, we've, we've talked about roughly 40 students parking. Probably You've never been more than 50 in memory around here. Okay, so, so 50. <laughs> right now there's about 30 some registers between 30 and 50. Okay. So we have 50 there. We have roughly, we calculated about 14 teachers that might park up in there because of their rooms being in the middle school wing or up in that area. Um, we talked about the administrative staff and it still left some overflow there, some room to grow. So it's, it's a good parking area. People are still going to gravitate to there during your main events. Um, but during those events, some of that parking is either going to have to move to the elementary school we've grown or in the back here. Is there a standard to use for parking um, space size and space in between rows at the elementary parking lot? Getting in and out of there with the truck and parking it seems <laughs> difficult. It's tight. Yeah, there's, is this going to look like that? Or is that going to change? And that one's going to be completely reconfigured. Your elementary school gets totally revamped. We're saving. In, in a lot of these areas, like in here, it's still the same pavement. We're going we're gonna to coat it, but we're, if it's paved now and it's in good shape, because there's a certain amount of your pavement that's in generally good shape, so we're not going to throw it away. We're going to keep it. We'll reseal it, and then we'll restrike these areas and expand them. But yeah, we'll be able to navigate yeah. through and park in these spots with a pickup truck. Is that what what's that? We'll be able to park in these spots <laughs> with an <after> 50. <laughs> yes. Is that what you're guaranteeing me? Uh, well, they're not yet. Yeah. Your average parking space, your average parking space by DOT standards is uh, nine foot wide by 18 foot deep. Your drive aisles are about 24, 24 for <clears> both <throat> directions. So those are your that's your standard si size that you see at your grocery store, your your Wegmans. I know, but what we're asking is since most of us drive pickup trucks and Suburbans, are you going to make the parking lot look like a urban Walmart up in Buffalo, or are you going to make it look like a country person's parking If you're looking for it to be increased, we could. It's just a matter of pushing more asphalt out there. Um, I, it's, it's a legitimate conversation to have. I, I mean, right now, it is currently designed for standard parking spots. I don't know if they're smaller at the elementary school and never measured them. It could have been. It seems tight. Yeah. There. So I just want to make the, sure. Yeah, the rows of trying to right. navigate are a little bit tighter in the elementary parking. I just want to make sure we're not making more spots by copying that. Right. 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 No, no, the goal is that any of our spots are going to be standard spaces. All of our driveways are going to meet those standard dimensions. So it shouldn't be an issue unless you're finding that issue at most of, most of your public um, venues. We could also do a quick study of your parking now and find, you know, are there areas that are 24 with the 9 by 18? And how does that work for you? And then we can say, look, this is what we're designing to. Does this work versus the elementary school, which I think we know is too tight? And then, you know, go from there if we need to bump it up a little bit. Uh, you know, if we need to do a 26 or a little bit wider. 9 is wider than, I mean, I've seen them 8. Yeah. That's really tight. That's real tight. So, I can see the spot in the back of the school, though, too. We're trying to get. In and out of those spots where the truck would be quite tough to. That's what I'm thinking about, Pete. When you're coming down the back there, to the back side, with the way they're across, that's, that's going to be tricky yeah. to, to get back. That's already a pretty tight, so that's kind of like oh, a one is, way in. This one is a lot down. bigger than what you have. So, but the road going yeah. back there, if we're going to have more traffic back there for these events, it just. Like that, that, that end. That end row going back to around the back of the building. If you're going to have more traffic back there, it just makes me a little nervous to think that there's going to be more people coming and going back there, or parking even back there for events. It's just, is that, is this? Wait, my, what, there's going to be more asphalt back there. Back there. Yeah. But the row coming back is. Oh, that you're talking about the drive back yeah, there, right yeah. the side of the building. You know where the curve is, where mm -hmm. the fire hydrant is mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I may or may not have hit one time. Well, <laughs> that's the goal. Yeah. It's, it's just, that, uh, that, that curve was one of our big concerns because it's a blind corner. It is. So, you can't see who's coming so you're, going there. If you look at the plan that's in front of you, you can see that that corner's been pushed out past the building a little ways, and then you make the turn past the parking spot. So you're not making a blind curve around that. You, you have to pass the building, come out and clear and make the turn. 
Um, I know currently right now he's 24 feet, um, which is standard drive right. width. Uh, I did not measure out here to know what it is. Uh, the engineer hasn't done that. Right. But what we've put in here will be, you know, I guess industry standard if I use that term. I'm trying to visualize, are you putting the cars right up next to the building or how, how do you have enough earth to put in these extra rows? We're, we're pushing out and it's so right now that pit is not enough. Yeah, because it's so slopes it's slopes yeah, down. We so we're going to turn. We're gonna push that out and slope. we're taking into the into the green space a little bit. So it's about if you took a line and drew it across the front of the parking that's on the back side, you're you're increasing that paved surface by at least eighteen to twenty feet. So we'll push that out. Uh, Jordan uh, Jordan talked with us, we talked a little bit about this the other day about snow removal. So it works out great for him. He thinks it's it's perfect back there. They can just take it, push it right off the back, so that's not an issue. Um, we are doing some things in the back there. Like right now, you can kind of pull behind the building. We're going to cut that off with a raised curb. They're still going to need to be able to get back there for deliveries, but we want to make it less pleasant for somebody to take their car and just kind of drive back there. So you will still have. Uh, an eased edge on that curb so we can get deliveries in and out of there but not the drop that there is now where it kind of encourages people to start meandering back there and even going all the way around. Uh, in the event of a fire, the fire trucks need to be able to do that but all the things we're doing are going to work with them. We're just trying to create more hesitation for public access. So I'm slightly confused too. With all this extra parking in the back now, won't they have to have most of the building open in order to get to the gym or the auditorium? No, you've got doors. Um, so there are cross doors in the back by the pool and then by the gymnasium. There's two entries on that side of the building. And once you bring, you can bring people into those entries to those areas and then close doors off on the other side. So people can get just into that core area. I, I mean, when you open up your gym and you're you're going to have people coming from both sides, there's going to be a certain percentage of the building that we're just not going to be able to stop. But you'll be able to stop the traffic from coming down this way. You'll be able to stop traffic coming down this way. During certain events, you'll be able to, if you're using your auditorium, you'll be able to block it off here. So it's really going to depend on what event you have, and then what do you think you need for attendance in the back parking lot we have um, uh, the rear lot there's 106 spaces back there there's currently 36 so there's a significant increase out there we're adding a lot more parking so if in the event of a, a major event you're, you have an auditorium full you're not going to have enough parking out front people are going to park in that back area and have to come through the building so but yes you have entrances so your idea is that the majority of the administrators and clerical staff will park in the back now instead of in the front? No. No. Everybody to do with the two offices in the middle school wing, student parking, and some additional visitor parking is all accounted for in the front. Oh, because I thought... There's some, there's some parking here in the back where the back bus loop is. We're getting rid of that That's parking cool. spots where the deliveries are in yeah. the back of the back bus loop. There's about five or six that pull right up to the building right where some of the administrators park now. Um, yeah, back in there. So that's why that's, that's um, circled on here, right here. I mean, the reality is we don't want to encourage anybody going back there with their vehicles because that's where the buses drop off from a safety standpoint. So is that, uh, let me walk down to that and I'll talk to you about it. Well, I, I wasn't even thinking about that. I just thought I heard you mention the number 14. That's up front. That's in this. And I thought that was too small a number. That's only for the amount of staff that are down in this. We just calculated staff just that would be teachers just in this wing. Teachers. And then that's in addition. Then you have your, your high school office staff. Okay. Then you have your district office staff. That parking lot is 98 spaces. That's what I misunderstood so. is that. I thought there's more than 14 people. Yeah, no, we've line. got almost 100, 100 parks. Park <laughs> okay, thank you. So as you, as you come down this driveway, there'll be entrances to here. So if if your parent drop-off is going here, staff and, and uh, students are arriving, they can pull in here and pull into this parking space. But one of the things that we've done is this area here is a large congestion area. It's very open right now. So what we've done is neck that down, 
so that it's not that big sea of asphalt. It'll be fine for the buses. We're going to restrict parking. There will be no longer will there be parking back in this back area. We're going to recurb it and get rid of the, the broken edge uh, so that it discourages anybody parking back there and really get all the vehicular traffic out front or in the backside. This will just be a bus drop off and delivery loop. Uh, what that will also do is close this down and, and help with the busing. Uh, we've worked with, with the uh, busing in that. Uh, we are going to replace the main apron out there right now. It's asphalt with a heavy duty concrete. Um, and there's plenty of room for them to swing the buses in and out of this area and then arrive. Um, there is still, we will still need um, the spots behind the bus garage. There are a few small vehicles that are your buses, your smaller suburban type things. So there's some parking there. If you've been in the backside right now, in fact, my, one of my first visits to the school, I stood in the back going, the heck are the black spray paint on that building for? And then I realized somebody had gone up there and painted on the back so they could park the vehicles in and they could see it because it kind of builds up. So we'll, we'll fix that and they'll be parking there. Um, continuing into that back court area, that's your delivery for the elementary school. There's still some parking back in there that'll be mostly administrative. Um, only back in there, there'll be some maintenance parking back in there, uh, but that'll all be, again, that's one of those things that we're gonna put signage that it's deliveries and, and restricted area only so we don't have general traffic coming back in there. Uh, the driveway here has been pushed off a little bit, a little further from the main intersection, so you enter the main site. Now it is a divided entrance, so as you come into that entrance, it'll have a physical island in the middle separating entering and arriving. There'll be an opportunity there for some signage to be kind of the, the first wayfinding, telling you you've arrived. Then as you come to this driveway, there's going to be additional signage there telling you bus drop off, parent drop off, high school, athletic parking, all those types of things will start right here as you arrive and then start bringing people in and around. The elementary parking in the front has been redeveloped. The parents will, will come in, come around the loop, and then make a turn and enter in the front of the, the school. It's a double lane, one way, so that at any one point you can pull off to the right, but cars can then pull out, use the left lane to continue on, so we can kind of keep a better flow than what we're seeing. If you want to come in and park, you'll have a driveway here. You can park inside here or then come out the other end or back out this entrance. Again, trying to keep the arrival and departure of student and parent drop-off separate from the general circulation. One of the biggest things here is the pulling of all the buses off to the back of the, the building. That's the entry where we talked about where you'll arrive. The buses will now come in and drop off. You currently have 10, 11 buses dropping off. So we're planning for, I believe, 14 spaces 14, yeah. out there just so that we have some flexibility. <coughs> One of the things we're going to do here also is that there will be additional signage and then there's also double strength. Um, and what we do is that the buses are only there for that short amount of time. During major events, you're not going to have buses arriving and departing. We can use that for overflow parking. So not only is it perfect sawtooth kind of design for the buses to all pull in and then just peel away, your students are dropped off. It's a very safe and, and convenient way to, to align. We'll also have some additional parking in there, striping. So you'll see a double stripe on the ground. It works out very well. We've done it in a lot of different locations. Um, so that's kind of segregated that out. And we feel very, we're very pleased with how this is unfolding. I think uh, John mentioned earlier, or somebody mentioned earlier, that we talked about these things bouncing around a couple times where the entrance was going to be. Um, to make that decision, there were many discussions about the floor plan. We talked about what was convenient for the office, what gave the best visual from office personnel out. We also looked at cost. Um, one of the significant things was going into that back area was going to drive more cost. We were going to be displacing more rooms. So I think all factors in together, this worked out very nice. And, and uh, the, uh, this is where we've kind of settled and come to agreement. Mm -hmm. And Rich, part of this plan includes a, um, what do you call it, a raised raised walkway Table, um, tabletop yes. tabletop yeah so what you're going to see is that from this sidewalk walkers from the town yeah so <coughs> this sidewalk will be continuous all through the entire campus and as you get to these cross aisles where you're going to cross a roadway what we do is we raise them so it's 
it's a raised kind of curb. Um, it's sloped, it's about five foot wide, and then your, your washes off the sides are about another four or five feet. And what that does is allow the plows to work through it, but it still slows traffic up. So when you're leaving a crosswalk, you're not just stepping off a curb and walking across, you're on kind of an elevated crosswalk and that just forces your traffic to stop. So it's like a big speed bump? Yeah, it's a, a huge wide just speed a wide bump. speed exactly. bump. But what that will also do is by breaking those across there, it's another layer of this, you know, hopefully telling people you're not supposed to be back here. You know, if you're driving here, you're coming over this hump. Um, just additional things to kind of discourage it. It's going to take signage. It's going to take education and dealing with people. We'll, as we get to it, when we do these traffic patterns, when we get down to the point where it's going to open for the start of school or whatever the sequence falls, we generally work with you to print up little key plans and little maps that you can kind of hand out, send out with the new calendar for that year, talking about the parking. Uh, all those things kind of help set the groundwork as we get into it. So I think overall, um, there were 395 parking spaces on the site. We we're at 416. Again, they are displaced into different areas, but we think that we've placed them in the areas that are convenient to the building and the access. Um, we are talking about what we're gonna do with uh, elbow buses where we can kind of place them or, or put them because right now they sit out in the uh, sea of asphalt out there and that location will no longer be available. Uh, the other element out there is there are basketball nets that are out there um, and we are going to get rid of those. Um, they could be, we've got the basketball court in the back, we can look at some other areas if we need them. I think we've talked with uh, athletics and they're not, those ones out front aren't being used. So I think if I think they were being used the, the front ones. Yeah. No. A while back, they're they're really nice. They're yep. They're they 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 I thought they had, you guys didn't like the fact that there were kids using them when COVID started. No, the front, not the front ones, the back, the back ones. The back by the by the nature trail. Yeah. By the school? nature trail, the front ones nobody uses anymore. It's the back ones that are like every night. So one of the things that will happen back there is because of the, the uh, bus loop change here, the playground, the pavilion, all that stuff is going to be moved around and pushed into the back of the building. We're going to take those. Um, first of all, the playground is, needs to be replaced anyway, so we'll have to talk about that uh, from a cost perspective and, and what we want to do with that. But when we pull the pavilion around to the back of the building where it's more adjacent to the younger age group, and uh, men and the staff feel that it's going to be taken better advantage of back from there. But that existing court will stay right where it is. Any questions about the site plan? In order to add the parking spaces in the back, did you have to, is that one of the rules that you have to restore the green space? Yes, so basically when uh, the seeker that we did, you take into consideration your amount of hard surface. And our goal was to limit the expansion of hard surface. So when you take out, put hard surface in the back, you've got to take it out from somewhere else or you get penalized. So that's why we're fairly close. We've squeezed it, we've made it more efficient, uh, things like that to make the, the parking work better. But we didn't make it smaller. <laughs> I'm going to go check now. And I'm wondering about the elementary school spots. <laughs> There's still a nice opportunity to a couple things. I know we threw a lot at you, but that we didn't mention. You know, this green space out here is quite large, and we're excited about even the design of that. I mean, yeah, it could be a flat thing of grass, but we could also put some mounding into it and some trees and things and make it a very nice, uh, basically, first impression to people coming to the site through the green space. So I think we're going to work on that a little bit more. And then we didn't talk about some of the... Um, Pickleball courts is why I had to call oh, okay. pickleball because I didn't know what it was. He kept talking about pickleball courts up there. That's the only thing. I thought you said green. Oh, I see. That's yeah, right. I see. Just said chipping, <laughs> chipping, uh, chipping green. Um, also, in the back, we didn't talk about, but there is some work to the fields. Not a lot, but replacing dugout pads and um, also the tennis courts are getting resurfaced, repainted, and new fencing. So that's going to be part of the upgrades as well. And there's a spot in the football field that will be regraded and repaired. Uh, we're not rebuilding it, but we are going to repair it because right now there's kind of a, a little dip on the backfield. I joked that it was a home field advantage, but everybody said no. <laughs> <laughs> Where are the 
bus drivers going to park their cars? Um, great question. That's a great question. So in the parking calculation for the elementary school, we've accounted for the 15 spaces that they will be taking up. So in this row, this first row here, we actually have a raised walkway and things to get them back and forth because they're only there for the times and then they're gone, so it's flexible parking. Um, I think that when you're having major events, those people are going to have to ask to be parked in further areas. Um, these spots are actually going to be a little bit closer than some of the places they have to park now. So we felt that uh, talking with transportation, that it worked very well for them. Uh, Lynn was involved in the conversation. So the numbers for what we're going to have in front of that building are more than what we had before and still accommodate the addition. Now, on your big event, we're going to fill every spot we have. I wonder about the grandparents' days and things yeah. like that. I mean, you're, you're overflowing to where that green space is now where you're parking. So and this time we'll be able to go down to where the bus is, and that double parking there will be utilized quite heavily. Um, and on special days like that, we can have people staged at that entrance to allow people to come in if it, you know, the water's bad and things like that. And there's going to be the installation of two gates, um, one that's going to lead down from the back bus loop to where people tend to go down to the football stadium. Um, there's a gate that's going to be put on that road to the right there. Yeah. Up, 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 up. Yeah, there's a, there's a little line across the back road there, that access road. Um, oh, there's one, this one here? Yeah, there's one there, and there's one at the entrance where the, where the practice football field is, where the bus loop is, where we do not want people to go down. Nope. Yeah, right there. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah, there'll be, there'll yeah. be a, a working gate where we can raise and lower that based on the event if we actually do want people down there um, because really that is designated as handicap parking, um, but unfortunately people aren't heeding that and they're just parking down there so we can, you know, raise and lower that, you know, when we want to. So. We did talk about the, um, the, the busing and how they would arrive because it would restrict that the buses are coming in now from the back, but from transportation's uh, perspective, we felt that would work just fine. Uh, the key is keeping those completely segregated, and this will do that. So one of the playgrounds is going to be eliminated? Uh, well, we'd have to talk about how if it, there, there's conversations about whether it's neat, you know, how much of a need there is, whether it's moving swing sets, so we're still evaluating the, the playground, but it there are, I don't know if you've looked at playground costs recently. <laughs> Playgrounds are pretty expensive. Um, so we're going to plan for it somewhere on the site so we know. And that's that's one component that we're still working on the development. Is, and, and obviously, if it was not planned as part of our original scope, so we'd be coming back to you asking and talking about that. I mean, I think we still have to have the playground, um, I don't know his title, come out and really inspect it. Well, they, they do a, a um, safety inspection. But there are certain parts of that playground that are in really bad shape. Um, so is it parts that we can condense it and make it a little bit smaller when we move it? Initially, we thought we could just move it. Um, but you know, going out and visiting it and being on there with kids, it's just there's some spots that are a little bit more sketchy than I think we should allow. Um, but we did talk about having the swing sets put back there um, and trying to get creative with some different spaces as far as you know, a bike trail or you know, the running club is always looking to do things with movement and add additional areas uh, for physical fitness. So if we had to postpone and try to raise money with uh, like a PTO or to just kind of put that on the back burner, um, we do have the other playground available. We do have the, play, the basketball courts right there that the kids utilize quite often for recess um, and fitness trail. So we just did um, three elementary schools where the, the sidewalk led to a paved loop that went around the playground, so it kind of isolated the playground and the, the, the uh, wood chips inside the playground, but that is now a developed into a track for a tricycles and walking track for, this, for the kids around it, and it's really worked out well for the preschoolers and things like that. Kind of off to the side, nice surface, there's a walk on. back entrance down down to the football field is that all sidewalk that goes down there 
yeah. This one here. Yeah, yeah, yeah it'll be a paved. Yeah, yeah, it'll so be a. Paved. Yep, it'll be paved. It'll be paved wide enough so that he can plow it. Uh, Jordan's team can can push a push a truck back there and plow off of it. Is that grade going to be a little less on that hill type of scenario? Because that's pretty steep back there. Yeah, we're be. we're working like we said. We're pushing back pushing into it back already, there. so we're going to have to redevelop that grade. Because at the end of the day, it has to be a slope walk, a slope sidewalk. So yeah, yeah we have yeah. to we're going to have to stretch that out a little bit. We don't want stairs, we don't want a ramp, we don't want grade yeah. drop offs, we want it nice and gradual. Any other questions? Yeah. 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 So at, at, at this point, this is where we start transitioning to a lot of detail. This is where we'll cut our teams loose. Um, the focus is going to be more about, you know, and we've already talked into some of it, little mail drop-off boxes, but this is where we really start getting into the heavy drawing and things like that. Uh, we will come back with some refined elevations. Uh, if, if everybody's happy with these and likes these, we're going to keep down this path. If anybody has any thoughts or concerns, we can, we can look at some other options, but um, at this point right now, this is, this is the direction where we're moving ahead if everybody's okay with that. I have one question. <clears throat> about this mock-up mm -hmm. of the little high school yep. and how you said that people are not putting traditional things up there that are static. In the past, when new people have come and gone to our district, some of them have not seemed to honor the history and so they've painted over things or taken down things or tossed out pictures. In a small district like this where a lot of people who graduated from here come back to the events for their kids and grandkids, they actually like to look at some of those old static historical things. So is this set in stone or can you have this nice modern attractive entrance and still keep some history. You're going to have plenty of opportunity for history. This is just about creating a, a portion of it that's more interactive, more technology incorporated. And then the reason for the, uh, as Ted was talking about, the, the technology is that no matter how much space you have, it's never enough to cover everything. And it's never enough to cover every event that just had. You have a soccer game going on today. You could bring in photographs from that tomorrow, upload them through the through the computer, and tomorrow they can be rolling on the on the you know the update right. you know, stats. So that's the incorporation of it. It's not throwing all the rest of it away or getting rid of it. One of the other things we're able to do is we're able to document more of it. So down your hallways we have rows of different awards and plaques. So a lot of times we'll we'll take either photographs of them or scan them, whatever it happens to be take that information and run it on loops. So when you're having a public event where there's going to be a lot of people in the building and they're maybe not over in those areas or they're in this area, then you have a digital screen that's running multiples of these things. So that's what it is. It's not a it's not get rid of that. It's just a different, you know, technologies here and, and the generation coming is a generation that's never lived without it. They don't understand what it's like to have to go and get a phone off a wall. They don't understand what it's like not to have a cell phone on 24 hours so we're incorporating that technology in and it's just more opportunity to digitally celebrate those things so you will lose some of the area that you have but the so other will be two-dimensional not three-dimensional that's basically what I think. no I it's think not it's not set in stone either I think you know this is an idea <coughs> and if we want to mix in some static images as well we can do that but we can also look to some of these side areas as well as Rich talked about. We've got this wall over here, there's a wall over here, there's this whole side area here that is probably used right for here, people yeah. to congregate between um, athletic events. So we can take this and modify it of course and also look at what other hard walls do we have where we might want to put some static images um, around and whether some of those creep into here or whether they're all over on the side wall right here or maybe some of them are here. We can work that into the design as we get further down. 
I've seen school districts where one of those interactive panels is um, a back is is the is the the senior picture, the, the graduating picture, or the you know. So you can go back and plug in 1972, and up pops that instead of hanging a physical picture on the wall of everybody in that class, it's now digital, where they'll take a picture of that. So you don't have to have a whole wall of all of these you know um, portraits. It's now that you take it, digitalize it, and throw it on an interactive panel. So it's not it's not getting rid of it. It's just, I guess, being more efficient with where, where that information is. Well, it's just something I wanted to bring up for a historical mind. Right. History. You know, you could have you could take this wall of fame, and instead of having those pictures on that wall, because really that wall is going to be gone, is take that information and put it on an interactive panel and hit, call it the wall of fame and someone could click on a couple buttons and say oh I want to search this person or see the pictures and just swipe and then they get to see all the people on the wall of fame instead of actually looking at pictures on a wall they can look at an interactive panel of it so it's not yeah it's not getting rid of it it's just reinventing how you can display it I, I got a question, uh, sure. and maybe I missed it. Uh, are there any plans for increasing storage at the at the school site here? For huh? The storage for for what? Well, the elementary school has no basement. Yeah. So there, you know, we lose out on a lot of storage there for teachers, and in for the you know district. Uh, here at the high school, uh, you know, we have a, a basement, yeah. but I don't think it's being utilized to its maximum potential. So I don't know if you guys have touched on that to increase any kind of storage uh, for teachers and, and also for the school district. The, the only storage capacity we've talked about is directly relative to the areas that we are working. Um, I don't know that it's came up conversation that uh, probably go back no to I mean see. right now there isn't there isn't a storage issue I mean we're dealing with it obviously stripping down the classrooms that we've had to do obviously because of COVID um, so we do have an overabundance of extra things that aren't in classrooms but we're not busting at the seams so um, storage at this point is really doesn't seem to be an issue um, you know, obviously, you know, we've had to move some things around and, and re, um, relocate some items. You know, for example, the elementary fitness room is filled with desks and chairs and boxes um, just because of, of the COVID issue. Um, but at this point, there doesn't seem to be a huge need for storage. Um, you know, you know, Jordan doesn't seem to be concerned, and like I said, we, we do have some classrooms that are just filled with extra stuff just because we had to really scrape down the classrooms to a bare minimum, but we don't have a storage issue here. Uh, you know, we did talk at one point about portable pods just because we didn't know how bad this is going to be, but I'm hoping that, you know, this is the, this is the only year that we have to, to worry about that, but we're still, we're still okay, um, even with stripping down the classrooms of storage. That doesn't seem to be major concern. I know years, uh, years gone by and always seem to be a major issue about you know storage so I don't know. So I'd just like to circle back to the schedule. First of all one of the things this board did was allowed us to get in and start ahead of time which really gave us the groundwork to get to where we are. Um, as you can see here we're looking at uh, end of November to be to be zero in for our SED submission. So that's close, it's fast month away, and we're moving pretty quickly. Uh, the drawings are coming together very fast. As I said, today we got the estimate back. That was our first good uh, test on the system. Um, we're gonna continue in another few weeks. He's gonna be hitting it again because he's had that, that submission went to him a few weeks ago. He's had it. We've still been moving forward with production. So drawings are still moving. Uh, I would like to ask that we, you know, we can come back in November with 
more advanced elevations because as we start getting into the construction documents and building the sections those profiles and those looks are going to change a certain amount so with, with the boards okay we'll keep moving ahead with the designs the way we have them and then we'll bring in another uh, the, the next generation of them as we get further into the details uh, we'd also like to come back and bring some materials and things like that <clears throat> we don't have to be concerned at this point about the exact colors that we want but shapes, sizes, those types of things, we have to be pretty well nailed down by the end of end of November to keep on, on the schedule. At this point, we're pretty comfortable from the design perspective that we're gonna be able to hit these dates. The teams are moving very efficiently, so we're gonna keep going. Once that submission goes into SED, then you've got the process of waiting for them. Um, they are more efficient right now than they have been, so I don't, I, don't, I haven't checked it in a couple of weeks. Idea of six weeks, yeah. two months, maybe. Yeah, it's a couple months. I don't know where they're going to be in a, in a month from now, but we, we get a general feel when we get close to submission. Uh, once that submission comes back, then then that gives us the okay that we can go off for bid. Um, there's potential that we could be doing some work this spring. We're still working with the construction manager to talk about it, but that's about where the schedule is now. If anybody has any questions about that, um, but. You're ahead of most in terms of the um, timeline for getting to construction. So a lot of our other districts are looking at starting design now or soon um, on projects for the future. Um, you know, this is one I can think of in our office that's ahead of most. And I think that's going to translate to you all favorably in terms of pricing. Uh, because I think you're going to get very, very good pricing this winter. Um, because right now there is a, a not a huge amount of work out there for contractors so I think you'll see that in return and how much work we can get done and then as, as Rich said we can roll right into the summer uh, with with construction and through next year and then finish up with uh, the summer of 2022 that's kind of the preliminary schedule going forward for the availability of uh, supplies I know a lot of construction supplies have been hard to get um, supply chains have been disruptive for all of our projects, but um, for the most part, we've been okay if, if, if things have been planned ahead. And uh, you know, a lot of the, the subcontractors are within the area or at least adjacent states. It hasn't been too bad. Um, once in a while, we've, we've run into a problem with something being manufactured in Michigan or something, and there ends up being a little bit of a delay there, maybe 25% we're still able to get the thing. So as long as it's ordered early enough, we've been okay. Uh, but it is, it is a concern. It's something we'll have to talk to DGA about, your construction manager, as we get the contractors on board to kick off, is really keeping ahead of those ordering times so we get stuff in time. We're working with, with, with a couple of projects that um, we're dealing with right now. There's been some, uh, we, we did swap out a floor tile. Uh, it's about $15 million in the project. And uh, you know, again, you, you're we're questioning the contractors. Where do they get go? Where are your deliveries? Get your smells in. Let's start acquiring the the, the uh, finishes and, and things like that that are going to be the challenges. Um, probably the biggest hiccup has been appliances. <laughs> Trying to get appliances has been unbelievable. But uh, anybody's look for a TV or a computer monitor right now, you can't find anything. So again, it's trying to you know just work with those people ahead of time. Must be no cost issues from the supply disruptions. No, but any inflation. No, we're still we're still projecting the bids we're seeing are coming in very aggressive. The numbers we've seen across the state have been very good. Uh, still, they're staying that way. The contractors are telling us they don't see it changing because there's just not enough work out there. Um, the value and the, the the value of products may have gone up a little bit because they're harder to get, but the amount of work is low enough that it's balanced out. So we're seeing very aggressive numbers. I think DGA is projecting a zero uh, escalation. Yeah, um, they did, he did reach out and say they're they're still waiting on information though to get final numbers to get a better est cost estimate. So they're waiting on some things. So he's assuming that they're going to come in and budget if, once they get all that stuff. <clears throat> Any other questions? There's the for the bond resolution that we're going to take a vote on tonight. That is us saying it's a goal officially and we're going to release
use that money and it's here, here we here we go. Is that am I Yes, so I know that um, there's some apprehension towards that. I mean that's an up to bond resolution. We are the the voters have already approved a capital project and they with up to amounts for financing and for uh, capital reserve. So it's, it's capital not that full go, you know, that we were wondering about. We still have the opportunity as a board to pull back if something happens or if we're not comfortable with costs, but it's uh, it's us having the ability to go up to the number that the uh, that the voters allow us to. So I, I talked to John, gave the number of the attorney, and I talked to him briefly about that yesterday. So there's the ability to pump the brakes if all of a sudden we say, okay, here's where we're at right now. You got that all the way up to bid time. Yeah. Okay. You know, I mean, in all reality, there's no expenditure other than our design services until until bid. You know, and when, when you can you can accept bids and we could hold them. And then, but when you award that contract, when the board makes the decision to award those contracts, that's the legal commitment between the district and the contractor that you're engaged in a contract to spend that money. At that point. At that point. At that point. Right. Yeah. Okay, so, so it's that's not like we just said it. All right, there goes you the You can go out to bid and receive the bids and the whole, the whole thing if you wanted to, or, or scale it back at that point. It's really, as Rich says, once you engage with the contractors and their specific contract, Oakfield, Alabama, with X Y Z general contractor, that's that's the point where it's 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 not possible at that point, but it's much harder to change once the contracts are signed and they start gearing up for construction. This is just to make sure these guys are good. <laughs> if something were to happen and we had to scale back. Do you have a plan for scaling that or not? Or do you have a, are these things all prioritized in your plan? Uh, the, I guess the beauty of it, the work is compartmentalized. So there will be some hard discussions about what do you want to do, for, you know, what's most important. That has not been done at this point. We um, get more worried about that as, as we talked about. We just got the schematic design estimate from the construction manager. And we'll get another design development estimate from them and then another construction document estimate from them. So we'll have a series of these estimates. If they were starting to trend up, then we would get more nervous about it. We'd be like, we got to start prioritizing some things because we might have to cut out some items. But so far, and as, if it keeps going and everything looks good, we would probably just identify some protection alternates at bid time, depending on how much uh, you know the economy is swaying between now and then and then you have a little bit of flexibility. But as long as the estimate from the construction manager stays on track, I think we'll be, we should be in pretty good shape. I mean, they're very good at I mean, they do estimates for the market anyway. So um, that makes us feel better if they keep coming in and saying, we're a little under, we're right on track, that type of thing is a good sign. So a question we would be posed with, if we come in 15% under, is do we want to do more or do we want to spend less? Yeah. Right. Right. Correct. Exactly. Absolutely. And that's the trend we're going to see as we keep looking at these estimates. You know, we'll, we'll keep talking about that. And we always have that option to spend less if it, as long as. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it, you could you could take you know you could take a whole component on. You could say we're just going to do the high school, middle school, or we're just going to do the elementary school. I mean, those are all choices that you can make at that at that point based on. But, you know, right now we're dealing with what we know today. I, I, I watch all this stuff unfold and I sat where you sit for six years and I, I, I can't imagine, you know, some of the things you have to be thinking right now, uh, or I, I, I do imagine them. Uh, so I respect that and I understand that. Um, yeah, I mean, we have, we're going to have to watch this as it unfolds as a team and, and as things change or come at us, we'll have to react and, and deal with it then. We're, we're here with you to do that. Um, but we're not, you're not making a decision today that you're, you're cutting a check and handing it off to somebody. It's the plan saying that we're going to do this, but we have many points in this path where we can deviate or change should that need be here. So we're talking to the attorney, the order of operations, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, Nicole, is as far as money goes out would be out of our capital fund first and then Bond. So the point of the, you'll notice there's an agenda item to uh, increase the 
uh, appropriated reserves and increase the interfund transfers. That's to take the money from the reserve and put it in the capital fund. Right. So that answer is yes. We would spend that, the reserve. That's us doing that now? Yes. Or? Well, that's us uh, agreeing. We said we were going we to move that money over first. That, that's what we would use first. We would use any of our reserve funds that we have or so, any general fund. So the lack of uh, funding into that capital reserve, are you saying we're moving that? No, no, no. I'm saying whatever's in the reserve right now up to in the that capital amount. reserve. Yes. So we spend that money first, and then we spend spend bond money. Well, next. so then we get interim financing. We get short term. Uh, they call them bands, bond anticipation notes, until we go out for bond. So what I'm going with this end. is the underfunded amount of the capital reserve could potentially be last money mm -hmm. in. Is it three hundred thousand? Yeah, it's like three fifty something. Yeah, three fifteen. Yeah, Not very much. <laughs> so we may potentially not have to pony up that money for if two years. Correct. Well, yeah. Whatever the. Mm -hmm. yeah, if it comes under, we might not have to do it at all. Is that correct? If it comes under budget, how long is it possible that we might not have to, or is that just? You, know? you don't have to. You, that's in you know the way they wrote it in there. You don't have to. Right. But then you'd have to you know discuss that. That's three million dollars. That's what? Three million dollars of, of construction. So is that ten to one deal, right? So we'd have to come in three million dollars on in order to, to make save sure that, that it's not uh, uh, an increase in the tax levy. In talking to the to the attorney, um, he made a good comment of you'd probably be better off trying to find over the course of two, three years, three hundred thousand dollars to save and not do it here because really you're losing three million dollars worth of Product and services, and again, it's not just one thing. Where okay, we're short three hundred thousand dollars. This is over, you know, a few years. So it's not like it's a one hit type tech deal. Hopefully, it's not two million. That we've got to find them right each year for the next <laughs> four years. Well, only time will tell. <laughs> I think we think every month that we come in here for a meeting, we'll have a little more clarity on that than we don't. Right? It's well, I'm hoping. I mean. Next month should be better. <laughs> <laughs> the outcome of the of the presidency is, is done, but yeah. any other questions? Okay. Yeah, one one more question. Um, so the, the buses are going to drop the kids off in the back like we do now. Correct. At the, the high, high school, school, middle school, right? Yep. Um, where they go in, are we going to enhance that entry point? Absolutely. Okay. So it's actually, it's it, it actually up here. No, it could drop off right here. So the bus will come in, they can turn here, and then uh, swing around and drop the students off just like they do. Mm -hmm. But right, right now, that's just a large open sea of pavement. No, I think he's talking about, no, about, he's talking about the builders. No, the actual the yeah, physical the entry point. Yes. Oh, that's no. Correct. No, right now, we're not. The, the changes there are physical to the pavement, the surface area. Because right now it's kind of a big open concrete. Uh, it's like an apron, and there's a lot of parking back there. We're going to pull all that out of there and make it more pedestrian walkway. Uh, the only thing back there would be deliveries, but we weren't changing the physical entry point for the students. Yeah, is there a way to enhance it? I mean, you know, when when you you're dropping off all these kids coming to school, yep. like the front entry sounds like it's going to be really nice. Yep. You, you want the back entry to kind of you know get the kids going in the morning and, and be enthusiastic, not coming into a, a dungeon area. Well, currently right now, Tim, the kids are entering the school almost in four different entrances from the back. I mean, they're coming in down the back of the middle school hallway. They are coming in that entrance. They're also coming in back where um, the ag classroom is. Um, just because we have to social distance the kids, they can't all come into those entrances. So, you know, moving forward, um, I can see that occurring for many, many years down the road. That um, that is not going to be that will be one of the main entrances, but it won't be the sole main entrance. Um, you know, and we talked about yes, that front entrance being so nice in, in a couple of years. Maybe the buses drop the kids off during that front entrance. We don't know how long this pandemic is going to last. So currently, right now, the guidelines are when we um, dismiss the kids off the buses, 
they're coming in multiple entrances in the school. They're not all coming through. Right, that's that temporary. Hallway. We have upgraded it over the years. You know, there's a, a Rachel's Challenge uh, mural that's that's there with handprints. So we we have enhanced it um, as far as the looks of it. Um, but as far as construction wise, there's no plan to. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I'm not really talking 100 percent construction wise, but just just to make it more inviting for the kids. It is. Have you been down there? Uh, yeah, yeah I've it's, been down there. But currently, right now, unfortunately, with the pandemic, I mean, they're coming in, you know, every entrance that's yeah. in the back of that school. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Thank you. Thanks all. Thanks, Thanks a lot of time. Thank Appreciate the time. Thank Have you. a great evening. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. to look at look at these are these are really um, in reaction to obviously this pandemic and the COVID-19 crisis so the first policy is about remote working um, obviously the district believes that in-person learning and teacher instruction is best suited on campus um, but now it promotes um, some rights for the district to have um, um, stu students and teachers and employees um, work remotely from home, whether that be on a part-time basis, full-time basis, whatever the district needs. Um, so obviously during extraordinary circumstances, it may be necessary to establish some of those protocols. Um, unfortunately, in a moment's notice, um, we could be shutting down a building, shutting down the district, and within 24 hours, we're completely remote. So really it's just a new policy that all the school districts are, are uh, having boards approved, so we have we have the designation and the right to do that. So that's the first policy. Um, the second one is kind of hand in hand. It talks about extraordinary circumstances. Um, if, um, if it's unsafe to operate in, you know, on campus in an emergency situation, you know, due to illness or natural disasters, the district will follow um, our previous policies. Um, however, executive orders, as we know the governor likes to throw at us, will govern all of that. Um, so really, it provides the board the right to quickly adopt resolutions to adjust to these, you know, crazy times and extraordinary circumstances. Um, as far as the third policy, which is remote learning, again, the district may offer remote learning at any time to our students um, based upon extraordinary circumstances. So really, it just um, allows us the freedom to offer that as a platform, which we wouldn't think two or three years ago was really necessary, and, and now that it is. And the fourth policy is really updating our student use of personal technology. Um, obviously, technology is changing. We do have a lot of remote learners. It holds the, the students um, 
accountable, that they will follow our acceptable use policy, our code of conduct, um, and that they will sign off. Um, I know, you know, um, Rob had updated uh, a few years back our acceptable use policy, so any new families, um, students coming into the district need to sign off on that. So really it's just upgrading, um, you know, our enforcement of, of those policies for our students. So uh, nothing earth shattering here, but the first, the first three are brand new just due to this pandemic. So this is your first reading. Um, there's no really need to approve them now. Um, because again, governor's orders that if we have to remote and we're following, you know, um, a higher authority as far as remote learning, that's what we have to do. But it's it's safe to have these policies in place. So, so we can ask some questions now and sort of punt this to the next meeting for approval. Or you can read them and ask me questions at the next meeting. Yeah, you'll have two more chances. You know, so we don't again need to. I need to labor this today. Mine's on the student use, personal technology. Um, when, I, when I read it over, it seemed as if it was um, now what it was, it was saying that the, 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 the student's phone could be used as, as a tool for research within the classroom. Is Correct. That, am I reading that right? Correct. Even though that we have personal computers for every kid, we're saying that we would then have a phone as well. Correct, but that's all again under teacher discretion, district discretion. Um, right. You know, so I mean, kids are using anything and everything to to assist in to assist in learning. But again, they still have to abide by our policies and procedures. And like I said, um, Rob's done a fantastic job with you know giving that information to to the students. Um, you know, one of the concerns that also came up was um, the use of technology when. There's remote learners, and maybe they're um, <coughs> synchronous learning with, with teachers and other students. And you know what happens if you know they're videotaping something, and then it goes, you know, something like that. Um, that's against our acceptable use policy, so we can hold those students, um, you know, liable for for using it inappropriately. So um, you know, technology is changing every day, sure. and we just want to keep up with it. So um, we're just updating updating that policy. Any other questions on the policies? No, I just thought they were all very similar. Yeah, nothing worth shattering, but just something that hasn't been written before, especially those first three that we should now have. Okay, we'll revisit that in the next meeting. So I'll be the group to the punch and turn this over to Nicole and say thank you for years of service for your last, for your last uh, report to us here. I'm sure you'll get a few other accolades, but thank um, you for your last report. <clears throat> thank you. So um, I have a few brief things to report on. As of uh, October 13th, we collected 94% uh, of our taxes, so that's great. We always uh, collect roughly 95, 96 before it gets turned over to the county. Um, so we're still on pace for that. Um, not really much to update on. All of the typical things that are due at this time are done, completed, or audit reports already been approved by all of you. Um, one thing that is on the agenda tonight is the audit response. There's very few things in there. So again, um, not much to do in that way. So um, that's all I got, but thank you, appreciate it all that I've learned here and everybody that I've worked for has been fantastic. And I will miss everything greatly, especially the district office. Thank you. Any questions for you? Can we call you if we need you? <laughs> sure. They have my number. <laughs> Dan has my number. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a couple things. Um, this this one you're probably not going to want to hear. The, the community's probably not going to want to hear it either. Um, we were contacted by the local health department actually yesterday through an email, which I will read to you. Um, they have assigned a school specialist to Genesee County. Um, they've also assigned them to um, the other counties in our region. And they will be contacting um, according to their email as of this morning, each school nurse 
um, on a daily basis regarding tracking our students and staff. Um, and the gist is, is that if a student does not report to school, a staff member doesn't report to school, um, we need to let the local health department know that, and then we have to turn over some of their information, such as phone numbers, addresses, and then they will end up contacting these families and staff members. There is a major concern that I have with giving out that you know personal identification and some of this information um, to the local health department. So I, I will read you the email that we received today. We do have our school attorneys on top of this. Um, it did send a, a, um, a tidal wave through the area superintendents. And once again, um, I can't stress enough how different it is from county to county on what their protocols and procedures are, even just with contact tracing, which makes it very, very um, just inconsistent as far as schools go, and it makes it very frustrating moving forward. So this was the email that I received. Um, it reads, good afternoon. We would like to take this time to announce the creation of the new school specialist roles designed to help assist Orleans and Genesee County schools in the tracing and containment of COVID-19. The school specialist, which is identified here, um, and I'll just, I'll just leave it at that, will work closely with the local health departments, contact tracing teams, and the local school districts to help facilitate school-related COVID-19 communications and contact tracing. Starting tomorrow, which obviously was today, we will be contacting each school nurse daily to receive a list of students, faculty, and staff who were kept home with symptoms or sent home the prior day. These individuals will be closely followed by us and the respective county health departments. If they are not tested or seen by a doctor within the allowed 48 hour window, these individuals and their household contacts will be contacted and monitored by the local health department and contact tracing teams. We will communicate with the respective school nurses until the individ individuals can return safely back to school. Please let us know if there is a specific time of the day that works best for your schedule to plan our daily phone call report. If you do not have a preference, we'll be reaching out in the morning. As we move forward, we welcome you to ask questions and provide input and feedback in order to ensure we are doing all that we can to effectively stop the spread of COVID-19 in our local communities. Um, so there was an executive order regarding the release of this info, but it's expired on October 9th. So we are currently looking to see if that executive order has been extended. Um, I want the board and the community to know that I currently fill out a daily form at the end of the day with just our numbers. I call Susie and Kathy at the end of each day, ask how many people that they've referred home, um, if they know have received a COVID test, and that stuff is inputted daily by me. Um, so that's just a number thing, but I believe this is really an extension of um, some concerns that we have about giving out some you know personally identifiable information such as phone numbers and addresses um, for kids so you know we talked about you know um, someone deciding to keep their kid home because you know maybe they have a headache and you know maybe they don't feel well because of the weather and so now I have to turn over that address and phone number and name to the local health department and then they're gonna turn around and contact that family. I, I'm just not comfortable with it. So at this point in time, I did tell the nurses not to respond to these phone calls and we'll just forge ahead and see what we are directed to do and I'll keep the board in the loop, but um, this is where we're at. So it's not necessarily state driven, that's our local health department? That's our local health department. And that's in Orleans and Genesee County? Okay. Yes. Correct. And the area superintendents said that they had um, contact with their um, school specialist, but they didn't receive the same direction that we did here. So it's again very inconsistent of, among the counties of what were expected to do so um, and that again was just an email we received yesterday afternoon. Do you have any other idea from other areas of pretense out there? Are 
they saying that to respond? We're right? yes, we're holding back on that information so until we get until we get clear it. directive of what we're supposed to do. So we don't yes. stand alone then. No, no. Okay. no. Okay. Isn't that a violation of a HIPAA law? Yes, that is that is one of our concerns. That's we we have. Um, I know the area superintendents, including myself, have a call with Paul Pettit tomorrow at two o'clock. Um, the district superintendent is on board, and again, it's just um, some muddied waters. And if we're directed to do it, we're directed to do it. But you know, sometimes we do try to push back a little bit because um, it, it just gets to be very tedious. Now, is this only for people who are sent home or who call in saying they stayed home because of symptoms? Uh, this is really for everybody. I mean, we do send kids home throughout the day. Right, but I thought I heard it said something about with symptoms. So if somebody stays home because right. they're tired, which isn't a COVID symptom, correct? When they get this phone call, yeah. or because their car doesn't work, they just don't come in. It's a leave correct. day. The concern that I have, though, is families have been filling out that form, um, and we've been making contacts with them because if they do keep their kid home. They do mark them of having a symptom of, yeah, my, my child had a headache. We've said to the families before, if you're just keeping your kid home for a day just for mm, something like that, don't fill out the form. They're not coming on campus. But unfortunately, you know, there's some families and we deal with them on a daily basis that they are filling out that form. They're marking that their child has a symptom. And so we have to make those phone calls to kind of clarify. Um, it's, just, it's just muddy waters and I'm not comfortable giving out that information. Um, again, until there's a true executive order or there's true, clear guidance in what we're supposed to do. So, so, so the information that you're putting on the dashboard isn't enough. You're saying that that's not enough. I. This was something that we received yesterday afternoon. This was something actually that I walked into this morning. Um, I can't it, imagine health department staff rolling up to follow up. Well, that's just that. Nah, and, 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 and where, where is the health department? They might, their time might be better spent actually visiting schools as opposed to collecting useless data. Right. I will tell you it's a very tedious task for me to go in there every day at the end of the day to, to input the numbers. Um, and I do, I do know that there are some districts at the beginning that forgot a day or two and received a, a letter from the state saying that they were going to have their state aid withheld if they didn't comply. Um, and. Uh, you know, so then we kind of fought back and said, gee, superintendents can't take a day off. What if I have a personal day and I don't feel like filling it out? You know, it, it's just um, how are the big, big brothers watching. How are the nurses doing and how is the plan with the athletic trainer? Good. When are we Good. A lot of hours? No, actually, actually, uh, the nurses approached me yesterday and said that they feel that they're in a comfortable position and they don't need the athletic trainer anymore, so he's now fully doing the sports, but he was here obviously for the first month helping making phone calls and supervising and, and you know tracking kids down, but they feel that they're pretty comfortable and they're all set. Yeah. Are you sorry. hiring any extra help? Do you, are you finding that you need to have uh, people around fill in for hall monitoring? Yes, yep. Yep, the so districts. Did, um, the district does that on a regular basis. Yep, we have two extra, man, and we're continuing. Yep, two extra, just full day subs, not assigned to any specific role, other than we need bodies here. And on um, a lot of things, the child add that those subs are absorbed into the building and used in classrooms. Right. So more of that we have in mind. Mm -hmm. From a budget standpoint, maybe this is more for Nicole. Uh, how are these extra things affecting us? Assuming, assuming all our money comes in as we expect it to and put the budget together. So typically we call in at least one sub every day. I can't hear you, I'm sorry. I said typically we call in at least one sub every day. So um, I haven't looked at the real data to, to see, but um, we do budget a lot for subs here. I mean, it's $75,000 per month. So, so my gut is that, and actually I can because <clears throat> it'll be in the budget status report up to um, September, so whatever we spent up to that point. It's, you know, I can, I can say probably without you look at that, you know, in the year end we're going to probably spend a lot on subs. I mean, it's just something that we have to have and have, have to do to keep us open, keep things functioning. 
over budget than you think? I guess I think, so we're going to be spending less on bringing subs in for like professional development, and I know we have been doing that so far. So I think it's going to even out in the end, but I mean, only time will tell. There's going to be days when um, no subs are here because maybe they're going to be remote. Nobody knows what's going to happen. It could be closed for a month. It could be closed for two weeks. So. But if I was to guess right now, I would imagine that faculty absences is way down in comparison to years past. It, I, I, I would make that prediction that that's what's happening in this building. Yeah, that combined with the rest field trips, committee meetings used to take back with the other rooms here and there. Well, we're, we're way down in regard to the number of teachers we pull for the classroom. Big, and big guys. I don't think we'll be over budget. So, I, I don't know. So, so I think that what Matt initially had started, we had start, started to make some changes to what that looked like and started reducing the number of subs we called in for other like committee meetings. and. So I think it's just in general down from that. Um, so that uh, principals have done a great job, you know, keeping kids in classes. So, so I think we'll be okay. It just depends on how everything unfolds, you know, in the future. Because maybe, maybe there's a quarantine classroom and we need to have a substitute every day for two weeks. In addition to the two, you don't know what's going to happen. Or maybe there's a wing of classes shut down. Who knows? What about so, other COVID-related expenses? Is there anything there that's been too? So we did a good job. Like Jordan and I got together at like the end of March and we were like, listen, we know what's gonna happen next year. Let's do let's start to prepare now. So we bought a lot of uh, cleaning supplies back Less last year. Budget. So we spent a lot of money on cleaning supplies and, and things last year. So realistically we haven't had to spend a lot this current fiscal year on mostly anything. We did we have had some really good things happen. So any of the paper towel holders, they're the pole paper towels. So there's a little bit of money that's been spent, but it's not been anything real. In terms of hundreds of thousands that I've seen other people posting, like I spent $400,000. No, we haven't done that. We didn't go to the wall and buy 800 MiFi's for every single student. We, you know, we bought less, and then we'll see what happens as, as time goes on. Are there paper towel holders in the student bathrooms now? Or is it still just the air dryers? I assume that there there have been they have been replaced. Yes. I know uh, for certain, like in our bathrooms out here, you'll see and the air dryers are still there because there's a paper towel machine. All you do is pull, you know. So maybe in the student bathrooms as well. I don't know the answer to that, John. I believe so. I, I think I they were disconnected, and there's mm -hmm. and yes. There was one. I there was. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the one out in the hallway. Yeah, that's all the way. Yeah, yeah. that's their angle yeah. all the way down. Do Matt, you know, did you, do you have an answer to that? You know. And now I'm curious. I'm going to go check. <laughs> I, I, think. I know that they spent a lot of time installing um, the pole so there was less, the less touch, she calls them. Um, and a lot of places, others were removed. Um, we also found out that the bottle fillers that we ordered were just delivered. So we're yes. going to have an updated. Um, there's a couple of different drinking fountains that will be updated to bottle fillers throughout the building, which we're really excited about that as well. You'll be surprised at how much things are on back order, because everybody's. It doesn't surprise me. Yeah, yeah everybody's exactly. everybody's doing it. So. But. I just know if they're worried about COVID blowing around in the air. The last thing we want to do is yep. use hand dryers, which. Yeah. Students I would assume anyway. that if the faculty one out here is the student ones went first, because uh, those are more heavily used. So, I hope Matt comes back and says yes. Okay. <laughs> um, I just want to give the boards a heads up. I've been working with Jeff. Um, we have put in an application and a request that we, Oakfield, host the Class D Section 5 cross country sectionals in November. I think that would um, suit our campus well, suit our name well. Um, we certainly have the space, we have um, the regulations in place. I've been working with Jeff on um, limiting the number of you know, runners and teams and setting up a schedule. So he's put in an application and uh, we'll see if Section 5 denotes us as having the sectionals here. So I'll, I'll, keep, you, I'll keep you informed. Um, Is that one of the sports things that there weren't any sectionals this year? Um, that's more for soccer um, in regards to the sectionals. So I, I talked to Jeff, there was a, a vote that occurred at the end of last week. Um, once again, there's very, there's very, Matt, what's your answer? 
the hand dryers are uh, turned off and they're signage saying that they no longer work and there's hand, there's paper towels. So Perfect, yep, there we go. Uh, so, um, last week there were some concerns between some school districts um, traveling across lines in regards to wearing masks for soccer. Um, I can tell you here in Genesee County and for our area school districts, we're following the guidance that really states that you wear a mask until you can't tolerate it. There are schools that are taking and departments of health taking that to the extreme of absolutely not, you're wearing a mask the whole time. So now all of a sudden, if our girls are used to that, but then they go and play a different school in a different county, they say it's my district, my rules, your girls are wearing a mask the whole time. <coughs> so this is now starting to upset teams and districts and there's just a lack of consistency. So at the end of last week, there was a vote to have um, some of these counties eliminated from Sex, you know, from these sectionals, because we can't have the rules, you know, set as set, you know, as being consistent. So that's a whole another issue uh, to deal with. Um, you know, there was a cross country meet here, in which again our guidance is that you start with a mask, you run about a hundred yards until you spread out, and then you can take your mask off. Um, we had a couple athletes collapse because the guidance that they're following is you wear your mask the whole time. If you want to run three miles with a mask, that's tough. And so, you know, there's just lots of liability issues and a lot of different guidance that people are, you know, um, following and it's not consistent. And uh, to have sectionals where you don't have a level playing ground and level rules is very tough. So. We'll see how all that pans out. But yeah. um, uh, Paul was already canceled winter sports for other certain colleges. I did see that. Yeah, that was yesterday, right? Yeah. That's right. I would like to say that you know we are we are up and running. Um, as I mentioned to the board, we started to reopen our um, fitness center on a very limited basis and our gymnasium on a very limited basis um, to some of the you know the off season athletes to get you know some some training in. Um, we're abiding by all the guidelines and, and um, the regulations that they're asking for, and we're okay. Um, so, again, you know, Jeff approached me about um, some schools that were supposed to host sectionals have now gone completely remote. But given our situation, you know, there's an opportunity that I think we could we could have it here. Um, again, very limited the number of schools when they can run the number of athletes you're not going to have a dash in the dark we're going to have you know five thousand kids here at the same time um, so we worked out a schedule and we put in an application and i'll let the board know if we're we're selected but i think it it would look good if if we were chosen and we could certainly pull it off so. um, Today marks three weeks that we have had our uh, Genesee County Mental Health and um, Corey here, and I'm actually going to turn it over to JC because I know he's been dealing with that um, hand in hand on a, on a daily basis. So I'm going to turn it over to JC with a review for the board. Thanks, John. Um, it's been three weeks. We've had we've in that short time developed a great relationship. Our counselors. Um, I've identified kids in need that can use some support. We're talking right now about 12 to 15 kids that have identified. They call, talk to the student. Is this something you'd be interested in? They expressed interest. They talked to parents, got verbal consent, walked the student down to meet Corey personally, had a good interaction. Um, I talked to Corey again today, and of those 12 to 15 students who have went through that process, we have a 100% success rate of students entering and getting those services which I'm astounded that it's that high. Our students are really taking advantage of it. I'm really excited, too, that some of the students that you wouldn't normally expect to, to take advantage of that service have some very high achieving academically students who are dealing with some anxiety and some stress from course load or stress with juggling school and home and, and work are also taking advantage of that. So we've seen a wide breadth of students take advantage of the services. When and I sat with the elementary counselors and Corey today, we developed what that process would look like for her building. It made it a little different, a little more paperwork, because we're talking about students who are younger, but really looking at expanding 
that program for the, the whole building or the whole district. It's really been a nice addition. Parents have commented repeatedly. They really appreciate being able to walk students down, or us being able to walk the student down and introduce them to their counselor right there, have a good positive interaction, be that bridge for the student. Um, we had one parent who we didn't even contact, reached out and said, hey, here you have a satellite office. I want my kid to go to go there. So that was something we hadn't even identified that the parents want them to transfer here so they don't have to go to the other side of Tavia for their, for their sessions. It's been really well. The students are enjoying it. Um, did I forget anything? How many days a week do we have? They're here one day. Um, she tells me that next Tuesday is completely booked solid with our students here. So um, if it gets to a point where she meets there were two sticking points I was worried about. One was I was worried about what would that paperwork and enrollment look like. I know some of the other districts had had trouble getting students enrolled to the program. Corey has been a rock star. We walk a student down there. She does the intake interview with them. She does the paperwork with them. She calls the parents to get their insurance information. It's all done one-stop shop. It's been seamless and smooth. So that's been outstanding. And the other part of it um, that I was concerned about was I just lost it. Well, we need to get a second. Oh, day. yeah, keeping her full. Um, she, thank you. She typically, when a student would go to their side of Batavia, would be meeting just once a month. And I had expressed a concern that once a month is really a low volume. So she's been meeting with our students twice a month. And if it gets to a volume that um, she can't fit them all in in a twice a month, there is the possibility of having her here more than one day. Her supervisor is very flexible with that. They've been great to work with. Super excited to be able to bring this program into this, these services into our building. So I want to thank you for your support as well because it's, we're seeing really huge gains already. Any questions as to what that looks like or, or um, how we want? I'd like to say the, the person that uh, that's assigned to us, Corey, she she's a perfect fit. Um, she's like you said, she's a rock star. So it's working out well. Is that uh, is it only for middle high school students that she's dealing with right now? Right now, um, she had a couple elementary students that were carried over from previous loads. Um, all the new ones have been from this building. We're now expanding down into getting new students from the elementary. We do have a list that I've worked with Joe and Sarah. Um, we've identified students that have historically gone to Tennessee County Mental Health for various reasons. They're not attending that. Um, we want to reach out to those families first and see if they want to reinitiate that process because we were seeing successes um, and things just kind of became a conflict for them to be able to get their child to those appointments regularly. Uh, so we're going to start with those students first and then after that we will talk about new students that have moved into the district um, and, and work with those families. So we will be available for the kid, kindergarten through 12th grade. What, uh, what role does our school psychologist play in this? Or doesn't she? She really doesn't. It's, uh, right now, if a teacher were to have a concern, we've asked that all those concerns get followed through the school counselors in each building. So they can get take and get a perspective from all the teachers and parents and get a broader overview. And then the actual recommendation would come from our school counselor to the parent that, hey, this might be a service you want to look into using. So that's kind of the process in the building right now, how those are identified. Our school psychologists are more focused in on testing of students. Mm -hmm. um, we're not necessarily testing these, these kids. The school psychologist is, is more so on the evaluation and testing of students um, that may need services through special ed. And the last thing I have is um, I want to personally congratulate you on your new job and new adventure. I know you're going to do great over there. You're going to do wonderful things. Um, sad to see you go. I've been here, I think, about mm, uh, 21 months. And in that time, I think you and I have worked very well together. Um, and um, it's, it's sad to see you go. And uh, I wish you all all the best. You've done a phenomenal job, um, you know, since I've I've been here. And uh, I wish you all the best. Your phone, you know, your number will probably be on speed dial for a while. But um, I just 
want to thank you. Um, you've left the district in a very healthy and, and good financial position. And, uh, you've steered us right, and uh, I wish you the best. Sorry to see you go. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. That's all I have. Questions for John? Resolve that items 8, 2 through 8, 10 be approved via consent agenda. Make a motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Communications. I think I've got some copies of our audit here. Anybody wants to see that? Discussion round table. Nothing submitted. Is anything there? Subcommittee reports. I don't think there's any activity there. If I'm wrong. Let's run personnel. Be resolved items 11.2 through 11.9 be approved via consent agenda. Motion. Motion. Second. 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 Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. May I, if I can introduce the board um, to Christine Griffin, congratulations. She is uh, selected as our next fitness administrator. Um, in speaking to her this afternoon, I mentioned to you, um, in working with Medina, um, um, they agree not to hold her to her 30 days, so I do believe that she'll be starting here next Wednesday. So um, she'll, she'll be hitting the ground running, and I can't wait to work with her. She'll be here tomorrow to kind of get her feet wet, and uh, we'll have her in place starting next Wednesday. Great. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Busy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it might be. <laughs> no executive session today. Uh, so we're going to close your remarks. Pete. Uh, just thanks to both for the time here and to my future. Yeah. I like the uh, presentation. I'm looking forward to the project. It's exciting and it's going to really, I think, that could be an uplift. And, uh, looking forward to that happening. And Cole, best to you. I'm sure I'll see you around, and you know you'll do well. Thank you. And welcome, Christine. That's all right. Well, as I wrote, best wishes. I hope you have a good time, full of challenges, and I'm sure you will keep you on your toes. And thank you for leaving us in the good spot where we are. Uh, I, I did like that presentation as well that they did. I just thought they're, they're understanding the functionality of our district and just how each room, the purpose each room's purpose is and how to, to refine that. I thought that was really good. I don't think there was a question that we posed that they didn't know the exact response to when I felt really comfortable listening to again, them again. Um, also, Nicole, th thank you. Uh, not an easy job. I, I think you're going to do great uh, at Kenton, right? Mm -hmm. It's easier spelling, I guess. I'll just put to write the checks uh, for you. But I think you're going to do great and we'll definitely miss you. And Christine, leave the Mustang at the door. It's <laughs> done by the Hornet. Welcome to the, the Hornets here. Um, yeah, I think things are going well in the school. Um, I'm happy to have my two daughters attending school. Um, I, I did get to spend some time with Wendy last week and appreciated the time and we got to hear from her perspective how things are going. Um, I think it's hard. I think it's hard for the staff to recognize the stress that the staff is under or something I can say to change that. Uh, but I do appreciate all the efforts that uh, Wendy you and, and your crew and all the staff in the school are doing to, to safely educate our kids and help them and hold on for as long as possible. Just second that. Thank you all so much. Tim? Um, very low, I already congratulated uh, Nicole earlier. And, uh, no, I mean, 
We're not making the news, which is good. So, you know, let's just keep it rolling. Is that a bad smart? Or not? Yeah, not a bad one. It's a good one. Jack. Really excited for to see some of these plans. I think that'll be nice to see it come to fruition. And I do have a, a good feeling that they do have a good feel for our district. And, and seeing some of the things, it's good. It's exciting. I think it's going to be fun to watch. Nicole? I didn't get to work with you that much, but <laughs> it's been good so far. So good luck to you. And Christine, welcome. Thanks, Jack. Can we get a motion to adjourn? So moved. And a second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 A